Hey, hey. Hi, hello. It's Welcome. Thursday. How are you doing tonight? It's almost Friday. Thursday's almost got more of an edge to it than Friday because of the anticipation of Friday coming tomorrow, which means the weekend. So that's pretty cool. I honestly believe that. Even if you've got to go to work, we're lucky right now we work at home, but I used to like that too. Because you go in, you know, you get that one day left, you've already kind of partially checked out. Gives you a little edge. Especially when you're married and you don't get to use an edge a whole pile. You take any chance you get. So. I think Andrew decided to start by impersonating me. <laughs> <laughs> Did, I never Did saw you get that. busted? <laughs> Was it true? Were you I'm trying to talk nothing. like me nonstop? I'm not saying nothing. Oh my God. Oh my God. I forgot again. So, yeah, I'm gonna use you as my oh, mirror. Well, you can talk. Okay. <laughs> um, hello, everyone from is that Minnesota? I'm and I've, I'm just making sure because you never know what kind of uh, abbreviations could be web only. So if it is, I apologize. If, if I'm wrong, I That's apologize, better. Daniel K. But either way, it's amazing to have you here. We're gonna add some wrenches because we got. Too many people here without wrenches. Too much gray. I you we don't want gray. red uh, lipsticks. Yes. Yeah. There you go. This one, Maybe unfortunately, me them on. unfortunately, you're purchased on, in Latvia, so there's no point of me to reviewing it. <laughs> uh, Lisa liked it. Uh, yeah. Uh, Lisa Manila, welcome, by the way. Lipstick looks good, so there you go. Yeah, it's been made in Latvia with natural Latvian products uh, by a company called Zinters, uh, translation Amber makeup company in Latvia. Um, it used to be very popular all through Soviet mm -hmm. Union. And I like this, happen to like this color. I, I have a hard time finding it in other uh, local to Canada or states uh, makeup. <laughs> there you go, folks. A little bit about lipstick, a little bit about Latvia. The only Latvian word I really remember off the top of my head is turtle, which is Brunio Rupatus, because I thought it's so goddamn long I'll never remember it, and look where we are today. Well, talking mm -hmm. about animals, uh, we got an ownership of an animal today. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? I, I like catching him like this. Uh, well, would you like to introduce our... I don't know what you're talking... All the dead... Oh, God. All right, we got a new dead cat for our, our mic. <laughs> Xenia comes with these great segues. There he is, go. And this time I actually bought the full rogue one. Goes good with the lipstick part, doesn't it? <laughs> God. Well, that's yeah. what you told me when it came in the box. I got a dead cat. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. So there you <laughs> so, go, guys. I don't know. At least I said animal, not dead cat. Uh, so he was right. Yeah, and then that's been the name forever for them. So unfortunately, well, I think it was a hamster before that because it was yeah. half the size. This one is bigger, so it does look like a cat. And before, what it was a whooper or something. <laughs> I think somebody has. A, I think we got a gas leak here or something. I don't Where? know what's going on. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I think <laughs> I'm still uh, high from yesterday's live stream. Yes, yesterday's live stream yeah. was incredible, guys. We broke a record. We had 53, 55. 55 was the max. 55, yeah. yeah. Uh, In the channel at one time, that was our peak, and almost 200 hours of watch time. Yeah, I think One it was over channel. 700 views. Yeah. Uh, what was so amazing is because uh, this was our comeback live stream. Uh, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's going to kind of roll back yesterday. At the beginning, we were explaining we got, in short, we got a uh, false strike uh, from YouTube uh, after somebody reported our promotional video uh, two days ago. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we would have been banned from live right. streaming from in for 90 days. Sorry. Uh, but uh, our the community and amazing creators all across YouTube um, uh, came together and stood uh, up for us. Uh, Big time. And, and uh, got it reversed. So uh, yesterday was our celebration. That's right. Shout out highlight stream. Mm. Uh, we I think we shouted out around 20, 21 yeah, uh, somewhere channels. In that and what we do, we not only shout them out, we give them screen time. 
uh, and also suggestions on optimization of YouTube and uh, things like that. Um, so, and we have seen that it has inspired some other YouTube channels to do uh, things alike. So we are very happy when we thank uh, you guys from the bottom yeah. of our hearts. Once again, can never thank you enough for the way everybody came together. This is what YouTube is supposed to be, especially us up and coming channels. Exactly. We got to stick together, and we'll always have your back. You need us. Just we're as close as a message away. We're always indebted to you for what you did for us. So. Simple things done right. Definitely check out our cinematic mm. videos because mm -hmm. that's how our channel started, and uh, that's what it is about. It's just we've been really getting addicted from our live streams. And we, by the way, oh, just kind of just one thing about cinematic <laughs> with Xenny. It's kind of like you know when you're yielding, you're waiting for a way onto the highway, so you just gotta make your own path. I just wanted to say with our cinematic videos, there's one I did last year for Via Rail, 150 years of trains, and it got we got. In, they got in contact with the other day, one of the largest media outlets in Russia. Yeah, uh, RIA Novosti, uh, which uh, broadcasts not in Russia, but in all Russian-speaking uh, countries. Yep, and they want to use our, part of our video into it because they're doing a, a thing on Canada, and they want to use our video for part of a part of our video, excuse me, to uh, talk about the trains that we have here and that. So that was. Big surprise because we weren't expecting yeah, it. <laughs> it's going to be a big, yeah. uh, a, a big segment about travels to Canada and about uh, Canadians in general. And they decided, to, uh, well, they asked uh, uh, Andrew if they could use uh, his video. So that's congratulations. Thank you. Well, it's us together as a That's well. amazing. Uh, 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 you want to do some challenges, please? Well, that's where right. I was going okay. before, before <laughs> uh, we. Uh, talked about the video, which is great. So thank you for mentioning that. Uh, I wanted to say that for those of you who are new, because I see some new channels in, uh, we are, I just wanted to introduce us sure. first. We yeah. are husband and wife team, uh, Push Studios, and uh, we are based in Montreal, Canada, in the province of Quebec. And through the day, we do photography and videography for family, events, occasions, business, B-roll. That's our business. And then in the evening, we are having fun on our YouTube channel. We do post cinematic videos as well, yeah. but uh, right now we're mainly doing our live shows uh, every night from Monday to Saturday. That's six times a week at 8 p.m. Eastern uh, with uh, guests five times a week and Tuesday Tech Talk on Tuesday where you can ask all the questions and everybody can put in their answers and sometimes we do shout outs and screen That's time. Right. And we always say that everybody's equal here. That's why everybody has wrenches. Uh, and um, our show consists of you guys here in, in a chat and our guest. And we're like mediators really here. <laughs> Not even. We just kind of sit back and enjoy it. We get the best. Product. Yeah, exactly. You guys make it awesome. Uh, and so. that's, that's why everybody counts. Everybody's opinions counts. Um, mm -hmm. You just... Uh, mm -hmm. Put away all your problems, kick off, kick off your shoes, yep. and enjoy the friendly and welcoming, drama-free atmosphere here. So let's see who is in the chat, yep. uh, the awesome you in the chat. So hello, hello, and once again, if I have missed something, just shout me out. <laughs> Abraxas Paranormal, uh, uh, one yeah. of Parapeeps, uh, Creators Alliance, welcome. Oh, great. Uh, Cryptic Cowboy, uh, Cute Kawaii, oh, welcome, welcome, Daniel K., uh, Emma and the Gang, um, Felicia Crow 93, In the Woods with Wolfie, John CRV, Leroy Jenkins, Lisa Milena, uh, Mare Bear W, Marianne Donnelly from Panic D Videos, My Japanese Lifestyle UK, Panic D Videos themselves, Patsy Houlihan. Um, hey. Congratulations on your new video, by yes, the way. Yes, thank you for the show, I really I enjoyed it. it. Uh, Paul Berger, Philip Cockrum, uh, Rand Jams, uh, oh. Raven Rain Books, Simple Things Done Right, Skyheart Demon, Super Suge Girl 28, I hope okay. I was right, T Throg, Terrell, the original, of course, and this natural journey on their lunchtime That's on right. Friday in because they're in New Zealand, and Tricky Rick. Uh, Hi, hello, and hello for all of you guys who are listening outside of the chat, maybe on your headphones, listening to us a podcast, as some of the people have started to do. If you can, say hi. If you can, that's okay, too. Just enjoy the show. This Natural Journey says, we made a video about a nature park uh, called Willowbank here in New Zealand, and they asked to use part of our video, too, when they 
when this happens, it feels great. Definitely, for sure. And exactly. That's well amazing. done for you. Exactly. So happy for you. Uh, Faith and Fallen has just came in. I, uh, in the fall, I oh, hello, Francis, House of Spirits and Kitties. Yep, Hi, thank you so much for dropping in. Throwing a moder uh, moderator on you as well. Uh, David LaHays Jr. Oh, another one. Yeah. Uh, Lots of wrenches going out tonight. Don't forget the uh, wrench for ranch hands. Oh my God, uh, I thought just ranch hands had one already. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you so much. And yeah, if I forget somebody, just shout me out. Uh, yep. And uh, through the show, if you have questions for our guest or us, try and put Push Studios at Push Studios at the beginning or end of it, just so I can see it better. It colors orange and <laughs> my eyes uh, get sometimes pretty blurry and I sometimes don't notice it. So try to put Push at Push Studios in. And if I don't, just copy paste it again. Uh, drum me till I see it, <laughs> guys. We almost lost our channel the other night, and I'm going to say it once again. Yeah. I'll probably say it over the next couple of days just how good it is to have all of you in here tonight. I mean, we didn't lose our channel, we would have lost our live streams, we wouldn't have been able to do it till September 24th. So, we've appreciated you before. Anybody new in here tonight, we appreciate you coming in, and all in general, we appreciate you just a little bit more after that happens. So, we're really glad to have you here, it means a lot. Uh, this natural journey you push you push boop, 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 you put hashtag in front instead mm -hmm. of at if you are on the phone and you want to highlight somebody like address somebody's channel you instead of at push studios you put hashtag push studios and it's going to do the same thing you actually can do that on the phone on the laptop too it's going to be the same thing uh yeah and well i i wanted to put um a video out there we have Jeanette uh, Lucier or yep. Lucier. I just gave you a wrench as well. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, we're really here, very friendly and drama free and welcoming. And the chat is always uh, very friendly as well. For those of you guys who haven't seen our latest uh, thank you uh, video, uh, Jeanette is my other half. Wolfie. Oh, welcome. Wolfie's other half. Welcome, welcome. We got to do just right now, we got to do the selfie. Let's yes. get that going because we had so much fun, guys. That were awesome last night. So what we do is we do a, a selfie, if you can, of you guys watching the uh, live stream. I'll give you the hashtag. This is not a group. This is not anything no. belong. We are uh, the, we have the expression. We have the uh, that we're uh, you leave your gang clothes at the doors. So this one is just for fun. So I had a question today. Somebody asked me on Twitter, "What is Blue Ranch Group?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> I smiled and I answered that it is a gimmick hashtag uh that we kind of made up uh during our live show because everybody here as you can see has blue wrenches uh everybody's equal and that's why blue wrench group it's it's a, not a group per se it's just for fun and how do we do selfies it's because i don't know how to make them i'm learning every time we do this although i'm a photographer i hate doing selfies there's the hashtag to do it you don't have to but we love doing it love seeing you guys uh, watching the live stream and uh, a picture of you at the same time yeah the neat thing is that you get to know each other as well so when you click on a hashtag blue ranch you see all the past uh, streams people that uh, have posted their pictures you know and today's as well just get to know each other so much more personal <laughs> and up close now i'm gonna try to do this so bad at this right so fuzzy oh uh -huh. awful it's really fuzzy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours later. I know, because I'm awful. Somebody teach me how to do this. <laughs> I don't know what happened out of this. Um, Anything special for Canada Day? We're not sure yet. Canada Day is our wedding anniversary. Yes. Right. <laughs> so we probably are doing something special for Canada Day and our wedding anniversary. <laughs> Thank you so much, Philip. I appreciate you tweeting it out. That's quite very cool. Yes. Yeah. And speaking of that, while you're doing your uh, selfie uh, and Blue Ranch, hashtag Blue Ranch group, um, why don't you smash that like button and destroy that share button just to leave a little bit left there so everybody can share it if you can. Uh, if you, and if you're too lazy to do that, go over to our uh, I Twitter. I love it. Go over to our Twitter and share one of our posts uh, about today's stream. And I'm going to just put the link in the chat. And if you're too lazy to do that, that's okay, too. I'll answer you after Mary Bear when Xenia's done. <laughs> just bring it back and I forget. 
yes, it was a great way to remember our anniversary. It was. We uh, <laughs> That was a good help because the first time I could never remember my first one. So I did a lot of things right this time, we'll say. And uh, answer the question. Paul is coming up in 10 minutes. And yeah. it's a good question because, yes, today we're going to have amazing guests. Uh, I'm, this guy blows me away. I find him so cool. Paul, IT bread trucker. Uh, he changed his life 180 degrees uh, left his uh, career, uh, his house, home, basically. Yeah. Everything which, uh, he ever had his values, like everything, just turned everything around and is remaking a bread van into a living space and a camper uh, stealth, uh, right? That's yeah. what it's called. Uh, and uh, yeah, and traveling across US and back. Uh, so that's who it's going to be today. And we're really excited for it. Very excited. No, it is going to be really cool. I, I've been catching some of these live streams and I find them so I don't know. I just like the attitude. I like the, I like his style. I think a lot of people wish they could do what he does. They just have the gut the guts to do that. Just that's our anybody who's new here, that's our wedding. We got married in Iceland on Canada Day in 2014. His Xenia is originally from Latvia. I'm originally here from well, eastern Quebec, but lived most of my adult life in Montreal. And we met by a complete chance on a game called Second Life and didn't play the game really. We just got dropped in the same area and stayed friends. And her wedding dress is based on the TV show Vikings on the History Channel. And they, uh, we brought down about 30 screenshots. And the seamstress, who did medieval clothing and weddings, and recreated it. So it was a pagan wedding on the shore, about 40 kilometers from Reykjavik. And, yeah. We kind of got married in Iceland because I never wanted to get married again. And then Xenia told me, well, one didn't you only want to go to Iceland, which was very smart, and I did. And it was also great that we uh, did that because her being from Europe, me being from North America, we met in, uh, actually right in the middle because we weren't far from the actual uh, meeting of the plates. There's a place in Iceland where you can go underwater, scuba gear, and this crystal clear water. And it doesn't look like much. It looks like just like kind of a tiny offset lake. But when you go down, you can actually touch the two continents at the same time. So, yeah, that's, uh, well, we were getting married there. And like Xenia was right. She said she didn't want just any ordinary dress. That's right. Because every time when yeah. I was going into the wedding dress stores and I said, I want something unique, something different that nobody else has, they were looking at me like, that's what everybody says. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I really wanted something different, uh, as you've seen in the video. Uh, so, yeah, Andrew came up with the idea. Yeah, because we love the show. When we just watched the second season, I'm like, I know which dress. I know which is the right one for you. And it was Floki and Helga's wedding. And, uh, yeah, that's where it all happened. It was cool that time, too, because we didn't know anybody there. We even left the kids at home and uh, just kind of eloped. We didn't really tell anybody we were going to get married and stuff like that. And, yeah. yeah, it was in the middle of the storm. Just us, a photographer, his wife, and a priestess. That's all. <laughs> oh, that's how I roll. Welcome. Yeah, you were reviewed last night. And I felt so bad for get back to the front because it was so nice, but I didn't know because I couldn't see the chat. And I'm like, well, well we can only do one because they were just Yeah, reviewed. Get to the Farm was playing a game for you. Uh, so, and uh, it was fast on the fingers and, and, yep. and won right away after they said that. So, uh, yeah, we really uh, we really enjoyed it. seemed like you got, uh, watching it. Did you guys find the game fun, that way of reviewing the channels? I don't know. I just find with the list that everybody then kind of meanders off and then kind of comes back and forth and i don't know it just seemed like a funner way to we had fun yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh those of who uh who are paul barker diehard followers are called bread rolls so there oh, you yes. go love I it love, love it uh Maybe we're honorary bread, bread rolls tonight yes exactly yeah, everybody here easiest way to marry i think we will sneak off don't mind the big deal Yes, uh, and you know what? The the funniest and the I uh, think most unexpected part. It was cheaper uh -huh. to uh, make a designer dress from scratch. It was faster and cheaper, yeah. like a lot cheaper, and it was cheaper overall to do a wedding in Iceland than it would be ever to do it here. Yep. So we enjoyed it, I think, more than we would, uh, you know, after a lot of planning and being tired. Although, you know, some, if that's somebody's taste, that's fine too. But for us, I think uh, a lot of times people think that destination weddings are more expensive and designer clothes are most, you know, but it was cheaper. Mm -hmm. 
and it was the most you know amazing part about it there paul just made us on uh made us official bread rolls i love that i think that is so <laughs> cool that's so amazing uh you have a really dedicated following too i really love that yeah. that's what shows great channels is people that are really dedicated to you and stuff like that not serving you just dedicating to what you say they like your message and not and then i go we were going back because we always try to look over and see what you've done and stuff like the comments and stuff like that everybody feels so connected to them yes you know? and i think uh, they're like enjoying the the the, the whole adventure uh, yes. you know development and uh, oh, by the way yes that. for those of you who don't know paul barger in the chat is our guest for tonight i just i'm saying for those who maybe don't know uh so uh definitely a round of applause uh, for our guest coming up in a few minutes definitely i'm just getting everything ready right now just getting everything ready right now I don't know everything uh destination weddings always yeah destination weddings always honeymoon included exactly why spend a bunch of money to make everybody else happy spend some money less than you would and make yourselves happy but mm -hmm. i mean it's each their own if somebody wants it that one like sure. it, it's your decision it's your day yeah there's no real right one it's what you want to do especially i think i was astonished about the dress because usually you have to order a dress at least six months mm -hmm. ahead uh and at the end you know most of the time it looks like all the other ones uh, this one was unique and different and made by designer from scratch and it took her uh three and a half weeks yep from measuring to to me taking it home <laughs> uh you know so uh unbelievable i i definitely like even if i would want to have like a white regular dress i would still make it uh at the same stress because it would be so much faster and That's cheaper right. I like that simple things done right. Any bread rolls in the chat say flour. I love that. <laughs> awesome. Love that. Love that. Awesome. Guys. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I think it's that time. What do you say? I think so. I think the yep. time has come and we're going to invite our guest to join our. The link has been set. Show tonight. The eagle has been signaled. All different kinds of culture. And once again, I'm just reminding you if you have uh, questions. Let's see. <laughs> If you have questions uh, to our guests during uh, our you, Patsy. show, you're more than welcome to post them in the chat. Please try oh. and put uh, at Push Studios or hashtag Push Studios in your questions so I can see it better. And uh, by the way, that was, it was a really great uh, shout out video. Uh, yes. You're one of those channels that everybody can have their opinions, but when it comes to you, everybody just loves your channel. So, And guys, you made a new channels tonight. Like I say, there's not a sub for sub. We don't do any of that stuff. I think we're good. Well, right ahead. Enjoy. Then go away. Hey, how are you? All right. Oh, <laughs> we're so Hello. glad it worked, and uh, you are on. Thank you so much for being on yes. our show tonight. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh my hey, God, yeah, that's what it works. There you go. <laughs> Anybody with an adventurous spirit like yours, I'm a fan. Instantly hooks. So, <laughs> right on. I'm in a weird location right now, so like I'm in a, I'm in a little like. Uh, upstairs, uh, lofty Ooh. area. Nice. Uh, I like that. I'm always keeping it, my people guessing. They never know where I'm at. I'm in weird vehicles. And well, lots. I think <laughs> that's kind of been your motto for most of your time on YouTube is to keep people guessing. You know, you, it's a nice thing about it. You never quite know what's going to come next. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's funny because it, it's tough because I have to juggle where I'm at based on um, what videos. I'm on because like my live streams will be totally different from where my videos are and it's people get confused so it's a little tricky. Keep some on their feet, keep, keep some interest. I'm sorry, I, I missed that question. What was that? Oh no, I said it keeps them interested, it keeps them on their feet. I oh. think that's that's part of the spontaneity that they love about your channel, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Um for sure. Like I one night I heard about a YouTube meetup and it was in Portland and I was in San Francisco. So in one day I just drove up there. It was like a nine hour drive. Um, and uh, so you never know, you never know where I'm going to be or going to or whatever, but um, yeah. And I live full time in a 1989 bread truck. Nice. Uh, yeah. It's like a big condo on wheels. So. <laughs> That is so amazing. Yeah. And we're definitely going to get into details into that because yes. I'm sure people are wondering how and why and what. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to 
down to the volume on that. I want to bring that video up so we have it when we need it. So I guess we're going to start at the beginning because you definitely brought some fans with you, and I'm so glad to have them here. And You so know what? I, I've been just blasting social media this whole time. I've been, like, like furiously pounding away the keys and, like, <laughs> getting everything going. But, well, uh, I love uh, it. Yeah, a lot, of my, a lot of people I know are here. It's awesome. <laughs> this is so cool. And so and welcome once again, all of you is all of you bread rolls, including us. No. <laughs> That's right. Love it. Absolutely. You've been, you guys have been on several of my streams. You guys were bread rolls a long time ago. I did. I'm all glad to hear it. So <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's hard because I do a lot of work when, when I'm watching live streams. So I'm always kind of jumping back and forth because not for pity's sake, but the six nights a week of doing this, it doesn't leave you as much time as people might think. Mm -hmm. You know, we get cancellations, researching on people, scheduling. Oh. It's a 40 hour week without any, you know. <laughs> easy, easy. I, people don't understand that. I, I work 40 hours a week on my YouTube channel very easily. It Is depends it? on, like, when I went to the RTR as this big vet event, I spent easily 50 hours that week on the channel, you know, and it was supposed to, for most people, it was supposed to be an enjoyable, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, relaxation, and I'm working full time. <laughs> But man. You, you love it though, I. Right? Yeah, I mean, this is. Um, I'm looking at. I'm looking at. I'm getting a little more comfortable. But <laughs> please, uh, the I'm looking at it as a. a it's my business, so um, I'm not just looking at YouTube as uh, like my business, but I want to build a network of people that um, in the future I'll be building houses with. I want to start producing. Um, you know, things that, you know, gets us out of that, you know, that rat race of a 30 year mortgage, things like that. Um, that's what I want to work on toward in the future. So really uh, YouTube is just an outlet for that. I mean, in order to have a huge network, I need to be <laughs> successful on YouTube. So of course I want to be successful on YouTube, but so I'm, I'm just approaching it as a business, uh, you know, oh. endeavor. So. Well, I mean, and I love that idea of that. Like, you know, I, that's been the greatest thing of we all kind of bitched and complain when Adpocalypse hit, but it really opened up a lot of doors in some ways. And for us, it was getting to meet like so many channels that have such an interesting direction away from the mainstream because we all kind of had to clamor together because there was no use to go and say, oh, I subbed you with two million, you know, subs because they'd be like, yeah, and thanks and goodbye. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm knocking them. They just don't have the time to do all that. But it right. really gives us all a chance in this size to really get to start meeting each other and not to force me to open up and see all these new things. Like stuff, we had a guy last night with the magnet, fishing magnets they're doing. Yes. It's kind of this new environmental thing. Like instead of fishing, they go out with magnets and haul in all this crap and see what they can get at the end of the day. And they're cleaning up the water at the same time. Like it's so, there's so many great things going on in the world that I feel this has opened us up to. Like yeah. you, right. you've got an amazing story. Yeah, it's, you know, it's it's a little uh, different. I'm doing a van life thing right now, so it's, my channel is kind of all about that. Um, but it's funny, because my actual, my goal is to be a, like a, a homesteader, you know? Yeah. Uh, that That's the really the hard nut to crack is owning land or having mm -hmm. land that you can, that you can use. Yeah. Um, that's really the hard nut to crack that, um, you know, but... Yeah. You're still using a lot of those tools in what you do right now. I mean, it's you know, uh, it's not like you're not completely disconnected from it. Just like the land ownership, of course, like you say, is the trick. But for the day to day use of that, I find you're very resourceful already. You know, I like watching how you're using every little bit of space. Uh, mm -hmm. You got the mentality for it already. You got all the tools. Yeah, you know, I I have no experience. I'm I'm just doing all these things just off the cuff and I'm learning as I go, but I feel that I'm a pretty handy uh, guy yeah. and um, you know, uh, there's a learning curve to everything, but it just proves that you can, you can do it, pick up a hammer and a saw and you know, or, you know, you can come up with some uh, amazing stuff, but it is what I'm passionate about. It's been always what I've been into. I just never had the job to do it. So I'm just creating the job. I'm going to employ myself and uh, we'll see where that goes, but um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, kind of uh i i do want to kind of have a business where i create homes i think that would be outstanding so well i think with the work you're doing already you're well on your way i mean i didn't grow up on a farm but i grew up in a rural area in eastern quebec and i mean what's the trademark of anybody rural is learning how to work with what's around you because you know and 
that's like right to a farm and you have that you have that ingenuity with you and i see that how good you mm -hmm. feel like when you do your next video and you're like well look what i did in this space you know when i chopped part of this on cut that's that's the idea of a homesteader really is that. Mm -hmm. so, yeah and you never did it before like nothing growing up like this like working with your hands working with wood and stuff like that any um no not really i mean my my background in, in work has always been uh hospitality restaurant um management um you know mostly i've been a, a cook though Mo mostly not in management um my most recent job was a um i was a deli manager for a large the best grocery store chain in the southeast really um and uh i was there for almost 10 years as a deli manager um so yeah my background has not been traditionally what i've been passionate about i'm good at it i do love food i love cooking yeah but so <laughs> having it as a job just just destroys it so yep. um i love to do it i mean i that's why kind of why i set up my truck i would love to cook for uh, a group of friends in my truck and prepare meals but I'm, i i don't want to do it for a business and right. uh, that's my background so um, I did own a company for uh, five years. It was called Poly Corporation, um, and that was based in Orlando, Florida. It was a tree demolition company, and um, we, you know, uh, after the hurricane, uh, Charlie, I think it was, uh, two thousand, what was it, two thousand four. Uh, I went into business doing that because there was so much work, yeah. and it went well at first, um, but it just. A lot of people opened business because there was so much work and then my work dried up and uh, I ended up getting out of it and becoming the deli manager after that. But How, how um, long were you able to keep that going for? That business? was a five-year five, five year, uh, business, you know. Uh, it did well. I, I had a, uh, a good history with it, but it just got to the point where I wasn't interested in it anymore. The profits had gone down quite a bit. Um, because there was so much competition at this point. So I just decided my equipment was actually still worth a pretty good amount of money. So I decided uh, I got this job opportunity with the grocery store and uh, I started to go for it. I wanted health insurance at the, at the time. And um, that job in the corporate grocery store world of, with the management and stuff like that, uh, that afforded me to be able to do what I'm doing now. So so far, I'm 3,061 miles away from where I started uh, on the other side of the country in Oregon. And, uh, yeah. So, I love it. I, uh, <laughs> and for a boom job, to get five years out of it, you know, that was pretty good. Not a well, boom business, I should say. Right. That's pretty good, yeah. actually. You got in at a decent time to get five years because by the end, you're right. You got into it for a reason. Everybody else is getting into it for the same reason. By the end, it gets so sad. It works with the music business. Oh, they come up with a new genre of music, and five years later, you know, everybody that is looking the same, sounding the same. So yeah. I think you did pretty good with five years. My hat's off to you. Right. And uh, really, the next business that I want to build, uh, I'm kind of looking at also like a five-year plan, but with the ultimate goal of um, turning it over to a much larger company um, and letting them run with it. I, I think that that would be an interesting build, business plan to build it with the intention to switch it up and do something different in five years, yeah. you know? So that's really cool. You're kind of like, I have always had that spirit that I want to spend my whole life just doing startup companies. You know, I like, I'm yeah. working for them and okay, you're going to be in Norway for two years. You're going to get this factory off the ground. Now we're sending it to Indonesia. Now you're going to be in Oregon. Now you're going to be in Toronto. I've yeah. always, I think because I grew up in a rural area that was very small, my heart always wanted to be all over the place. You know, you felt like you paid your dues by the time you were 17. Because where I grew up, everybody, their dream was to own a house by the time they were 23, have a car. And that's yeah. where the dream kind of died off. And it's like, no, there's a whole world out there. Yeah. It, a lot, so many people, I don't know. I, I, I wanted to, the main thing is just getting that locked down to 30 year mortgage yeah. um, was something I didn't want to want to ever do. I don't know. I've had a, I consider myself a really a late bloomer as well. I never got started. I've been, I'm a large adult child, I guess. <laughs> so, um, That's you cute. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess that's uh it could be a positive and a negative, but, um, you know, I, doing this journey, um, there's things that I really want to change. Um, 
like addictions that I have, um, you know, I serious issues that, um, you know, I, I'm a little bit overweight. I feel very healthy and stuff, but um, mm -hmm. I've always had an unhealthy relationship with food. I want to change that completely uh, and just, overturn that i want to break all these um you know like addictions to um consumerism you know just uh, yeah. that spending that thing that we're programmed to do and just spend all of our money i i really have a poor relationship with money as well so that's kind of part of this whole thing was to um i i don't know i want to really reevaluate all of my belief systems even my belief in currency um i i know a guy that's an amazing guy his name's Giuseppe, and um, he uh, gives free tea away out of his converted school bus. Um, he travels around the country. Uh, he doesn't believe in currency, uh, so to speak. I mean, he works with it when he has to, but he dumpster dives for his food. He lives off the waste and the fat of society, is what he says, you know? Um, he's just a very inspiring, outstanding guy, and that's kind of what I, I want to emulate a little bit of in my own life um my friend seven gray he's doing the same thing actually he's uh uh he has a step band similar to mine and um he's kind of doing a free tea thing but i don't want to do it that specifically but i like the idea of living off of the waste of society yeah the metaphor of the whole thing i mean it's an inspiration and that's probably has that been helping you a lot by being on youtube is getting to meet other people that have similar interests in that and kind of like learn from each other and network oh big time it's it's crazy because these people that i watched a year ago i just kind of obsessed over their videos and did for research you know because i bought this bread van and i'm just digging in figuring out what i'm gonna do and looking for videos and there was very little resources so seven gray uh, he has a channel called Seven Wanders the World, um, mm. and he has a step van, um, and he's turning it into a uh, free tea house and book, uh, book, I forget, book trade or uh, some, something like that. Um, I forget exactly how he words it, but um, I don't know. So I, I never I never expected to ever meet him in real life, really, and like. But now he's a friend of mine. I have his like phone number in my phone. I could text him, and uh, you know it's kind of weird. It's uh, surreal. Uh, there's another guy named yeah, very. It, there's another guy named Will Prowse, and he has a fairly large channel. He has twenty thousand subscribers, twenty four thousand something, and uh, he's hilarious. He's a van lifer. He's lived in vans and RVs, and um, mm. when I was getting ready to quit my job and change everything, I was watching his videos, and he sold. All his all of his possessions, put everything in a backpack and just flew to China um, with a, like an open ended ticket. Um, wow. And I was like, wow, that that's just, that's something I want to do. I, I'm starting with the United States, but I could totally see I want to be a world tra uh, traveler, yeah. you know, like um, so there's a lot of um, inspiration that I've seen out there and I've met in real life now. And it, it's it's crazy that. So cool. uh, it's a it's a new world though you know this youtube thing is definitely oh. a new thing it's opened the whole world to us you know it, it actually does let us become true dreamers which means that you can make it in reality and the connections yeah. you we see so many people in here now that get together with each other you know and do stuff together and i think it's so cool i, I really is neat i'm hoping you know summer <laughs> I, I like you said about you know it allows you to be a true dreamer um, I always had these, I was very inventive when I was a little kid. I had notebooks where I made inventions and stuff. And just somewhere along the way, a series of dream tramplers come along and, you know, kind of tell yeah. you that, uh, it, mm -hmm. it can't happen or you need to be realistic or all these things that you get programmed along the way, you know, Right. but it just took me a long time. I'm 42 years old now, but I think I'm finally getting to the point where I like, I can believe that I can do those dreams that I dreamt so many years ago. It's just taking me a long time to like, well, maybe it's not so long because I'm still 42 years is pretty young as well. So I don't know. You're I'm glad you started. said that because this fellow here is always <laughs> saying like it's 80 or something. And then right. he's saying that sentence, I'm like, oh no, guys, <laughs> you're in right. 40s. You have like half of your life in front of you. Like how, how is it old? It's not. It's not at all. No. At all. It's, yeah. it's like, it's yeah. half 
a life right there. I'm like Venetian blinds. It depends on the day. <laughs> sometimes, it's cool, sometimes. It's... <laughs> like yeah. I told one of the students, a friend of mine was here not long ago. We were talking because we're both in our 40s. I'm 44. And he really hated turning into his 40s. And I said, you know what? It's been some of the best years of my life. I've traveled all through Europe, slept in cars, on trains, ended up. I've seen 20-some countries. I've got to do all these crazy things. And that was all in my 40s. You know, so they're not, I don't find them that bad. I'm quite, And I appreciate them more because I'm in my 40s. I was going to ask you that. Do you feel at, this, at your age you're appreciating it more than if you had to do this when you were like 18 or 20? Uh, I don't think I would appreciate it more or less if I was younger. But um, I don't know. I sometimes feel like, you know, I missed out on lost time, you know, when I was 18 years old or, you know, whatever. But um, I also feel like I I crafted this life. I created this life for myself. I'm exactly where I meant for me to be. I may not see it. Really, maybe the goal for me is when I'm at 50. When I'm 50, looking back at 42, I'm probably going to, you know, uh, just be in shock of what's changed or, you know, so big picture. I think, uh, I think I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the perfect That's place. Great answer. I love that. Answer. And I think that I, uh, you know, it has shifted through the years too, through the generations, 40 or 50, you know, or even 30 now is not what it used to be yeah. like 30 years ago. And that's why they say like, you know, like, uh, forties is your new thirties and fifties is your new forties because yeah. really it, it has, it has changed to that. I think it's, it's quite different how our parents even, or, or even more, our grandparents were living when they were 40. Uh, so I, I don't think we can quite uh, mm. compare it to the same. Uh, well, like he was saying, like yeah. about the locked-in 30-year mortgage, by the time somebody was 40, they were already usually about 15, 20 years into paying it. Yeah. And that was their life. And that meant it was going to end coming up in about 10 years. And then kind of the purpose went down the window with it. So yeah. now this new outlook keeps people looking and dreaming and thinking and pushing themselves a lot longer in life. Yeah, for sure. The... Um... Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just <laughs> no, no, no problem at all. I, I, please. <laughs> so I want to yeah. take you back. We kind of jumped the gun a little bit, and there's one question I like to ask people. This is an open end question. We're not Jerry Springer. We don't make people cry. There's nobody coming from your past. It's wherever you want to go back to. <clears throat> if you want to go back, <laughs> to toddler to your elementary to your high school, wherever you feel comfortable in starting. And just kind of a bit of a timeline about like where you grew up, if you want to talk about like a bit about family, what it was like growing up, what it was like in high school, up to where you are now. Just as loose as you're, or as, as packed as you choose to tell it. Okay. Yeah, no problem. And I, I'm a very open person. I'm a, yes. I'm a pretty open book. So I love that. Um, <laughs> the, let's, I, I don't know. I, I grew up in, I was born in Chicago. Uh, but at the age of like six or seven, we moved to Orlando, Florida. Um, my so it's me and my mother, my father, and my sister Alicia. Um, so uh, moved to Orlando, Florida, and I'd only been in you know maybe kindergarten in Chicago, so started first grade here. Um, and I just never really enjoyed Orlando, Florida all that much. Uh, I just felt connected to Chicago. I like the snow and stuff like that. So I'm always kind of, what's that? Your personality is Chicago. Yeah, yeah, I think so, a little bit more. Um, there's definitely a huge beach culture and stuff in Orlando. And, and I don't have a beach body. I never have, you know, so. Um, <laughs> the... Uh, so anyways, the, I, I grew up, you know, got through high school and all that stuff, but all throughout school, I was just always, um, you know, I, I never really had like a, a place. I mean, I was, I was with everybody, you know, but I never really, um, had much of a place until I kind of got with the, uh, like a church group in high school. Um, and then I became like, a. um, it was a Baptist church. So I got involved with the, um, the Baptist church a lot. So that was probably like my first big, like group of interest, you know, um, I was a rapper. <laughs> I was a Christian rapper in the, in the group. <laughs> was there, was yeah. there a 
for it in Chicago? Like, was, I mean, was there a, sh a scene there for Christian rappers, like that you were part of? Like, the mm -hmm. no, not necessarily. We had like an evangelism team called Crossfire, and mm. uh, we would like do performances and stuff like that. So, um, I was I was a singer and, and stuff as well. Um, but yeah, me and two of my friends, um, Kyle and Wes, we formed a group called the Heaven Bound Crew. And we would do our own special performances at the church. <laughs> I love the name. And, uh, oh, that's good. Actually. Yeah, it, it's if there's some there's some video out there somewhere. Oh, we'll be searching for that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's online. It, this is gonna. It would be hard to find. It's on a VHS type <laughs> somewhere, but um, hopefully it gets destroyed forever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, I, that that never needs to. <laughs> Never needs to come out ever. But, Those are the ones that um, usually get found when you get famous. So watch out that you don't take off tomorrow on your YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, it's somewhere at my dad's house. There's a there's a box of VHS tapes, so oh. I need to locate that. Uh, <laughs> but um, okay, so but all that throughout that time, I just I really just wanted a girlfriend, and I was alone the entire time. You know, like that was really the main thing. Was uh, never had a girlfriend all through high school. Um, you know, I, by the time I was 21, I think I kissed my first girl. <laughs> I was at 21, so oh. yeah. Um, That's funny because you're so charismatic and all that stuff. Like, I kind of figured you'd be like working the floor when you were in your teens. No, I don't know. I don't know what it was. I was like the friend zone guy. I was just so like, oh. um, I don't know. I, I, that was like, I don't know. I just I had this horrible fear fear of like rejection that I wouldn't really even try, you know. So oh. <laughs> I think that was oh, there's a bunch of money in here. I think that was kind of the thing. Um, and um, it took me until I was like 32 years old to kind of break that mentality, really? you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I didn't. I mean, I could tell you, like, really, the whole breaking point, like, I, I started getting into this thing called um, EFT. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. But it's um, a sort of like a therapy. Um, you can work through, like, you know, things from your past, uh, things that come to mind, self-limiting beliefs that you have. Right. Um, you like... can, yeah, and it's kind of like a self-therapy that you can do. Um, cool. But it's really powerful stuff. And um, I kind of figured out the whole thing that was kind of holding me up. And it was a very innocent thing that happened years ago. Um, but um, let me, I'll just tell you about it because it would make things more clear. But sure. the, um, my dad was like the family photographer. I have hundreds of amazing pictures. My dad took everything. <laughs> so one night I was getting ready for bed. I had tidy whities on, like little, you know, and he was just like, hey, make the muscle like a muscle man, right? So I made this muscle pose and um, I uh, thought it would look cool, right? So, but back then you had to send away for pictures and they come back. And, um, but a week later, like my mother's like laughing about something, right? So I don't know what it is. And she calls over my, dad and my sister and like I think they're all kind of like laughing about it um maybe that's what, just the way I remember it maybe I just blew it out of proportion you know right. but when I came over they were laughing about my picture you know um wow. and it very simple little thing but mm -hmm. at that point when I was six years old I was like or however old I was you know some sometime around then I was just like you know what nobody's ever gonna like laugh at my body and shame me like that ever again so mm -hmm. um that kind of you know that's, that's those are the kind of things little for me it was it was something simple and pretty innocent for some people have a mo way more traumatic past mm -hmm. so i feel very very lucky you know i mean that's pretty yeah. charmed life you know to that that's my big thing but, <laughs> but that does um, happen. you're right something some that people take for granted can really really stay with somebody you know and they don't even realize they've done it at the time it's not they've done it maliciously mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt or stick with you so yeah, I, 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 I may have totally mis misinterpreted why they were laughing or yeah or you know maybe they were laughing because they did think it looked cool or um i don't know but 
um mm. something simple like that like when we're five six years old we get hurt for the first time and we create this like declaration and that actually stops you from succeeding in the future i yeah. never tried to like i didn't want to get laughed at by girls or Mm -hmm. I never would work out. I didn't even, I never ran a mile in my life until I became uh, 32 or three. Um, I don't know. I just was afraid to work out or let anybody see me um, right. in that way. So um, I think then, you know, you create your own subsequent events yeah. that enforce this, you know, then you become I, I, like a fat kid and people make fun of you and you're like, you know, I think, like, um, you remember when TVs used to go off the air for the night and they'd say, like, good night, we end our program, and they'd play the national anthem and then that beep thing? Yeah. I used to freak out at that for years. My, I would drive my parents insane because my father would always fall in front of the TV asleep or my mother. I'd be, like, crying and begging them to get up. I'd go into shakes and then, you know, go to bed, stop it, you know. And years later... <laughs> I almost punched my principal in the mouth in grade 11, so I was kind of kicked out, and the agreement to get my marks was I had to go see the school counselor. Mm -hmm. And I wasted our time, but then we got time on that one day, and I came back, because this lasted for about three years. I used to go in these kind of panic attacks. We finally pieced together what happened that day was too young to understand completely, and I heard my father talking when my grandfather died. He went in the house and found him in front of the TV asleep with the TV off the air. Oh, wow. So young and not understanding the story, like you were saying, fully ended up probably like staying with me with these terrors for about three, four years. Yeah. At, all worrying that my parents would probably die if the TV went off the air and they were down there. Yeah. You know, yeah. So. It's associated something unrelated, really, to yeah. this, this death. Yeah. Sorry, that's it's, why I was telling your story. It just made me think of that. I actually had never had anybody else tell me something that felt that way. So that's why I really enjoyed what you said. Right. I, and, you know, that's kind of like a personal thing, but, you know, I, I don't think my story is kind of, it, it's good because that's the real story of what happened. And like, um, I don't know. I, I think for a lot of people, they they make the connection. Like maybe there is something like that, that because you'll have these things that just will hold stand in your way of success for many, many years. And I didn't realize that until I was 32 years old. And, I had a huge revolution. I mean, I'm a little, uh, I wait some come back on. I'm changing my life back up again right now. Okay. But um, I had lost like 70 pounds. Wow. Um, I, I'd become in the best health of my life. I was able to run uh, 10 kilometers now. And um, for you. so that's another part of this journey is I want to get back to all those things, get back in the shape that I was and, um, uh, that's another major component of my truck needing to be have a kitchen uh -huh. is so that I can cook healthy. Um, yeah. I can live healthy. I'm going to start working out workout regimens. It's all going to be, my channel is going to be a huge um, influence of what makes you healthy. What is considered fitness um, And you know, I'm not going to go crazy with it, No, um, but it is definitely going to be a lot of, um, you know, life, changing things on there as far as like what you can do in your own life to you know lose weight or change your life or whatever so and it's also ties into your part about also saving money if you're going to be traveling and eating out all the time it's going to cost you an absolute fortune so it's a two-part system of eating healthier yeah. on, on a budget more yeah and i'm actually getting into some dumpster diving i know it grosses everybody out as soon as you say that but um i worked at a grocery store for nearly 10 years and i see what they do at the end of the night they pull entire cases of food that are out of date yeah. and um you know there's there's some companies out there that do a nice job of setting perfectly good food aside in in stacks and you can come by and pick it up and um i've been getting into um fermenting foods um, so I brew kombucha. I saw you guys. Uh, yes. post, or, I loved it. I'm yeah. like, I want it for the summer. I, I want yeah. that. <laughs> it, it's super, super easy to do. Uh, you just got to get a SCOBY. That's the only thing. Uh, I had a friend of mine uh, donate a little piece of her SCOBY. Uh, she was another van lifer and uh, she had one growing. So she gave me a piece of hers, and um, but you can order them on Amazon actually. So oh, really? That's what I was gonna yeah. ask because I didn't know. Uh, but I like I, I like the idea that you're actually making them different types, like that apple sparkle thing. Yeah, it was uh, like, the apple crisp. 
yes, or honey crunch. Yeah. Yeah, like you have different uh, flavors to it. We were talking about the other day when we had the beer crafters. Yes. If it's actually possible to make beer from that. I called this months ago. I called this like six months ago. I said the next big thing, if we could get into it and actually brew and bottle fermented kombucha into like a beer, it would yeah. be a huge thing. Um, and I know there's companies coming out with it now, but you know, it's not like I was ready to go with that idea. <laughs> Just we but, should have uh, patented it, you know, it would yeah. go crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I'm going to try that, what, uh, what you, and I will be messaging you when I get that, that thingy to, to make it, because <laughs> I remember my grandparents were doing something very similar with a tea mushroom, it's called, or something like that. Yeah, like, they call it, it's exactly what it is, yeah. it's they, A lot of people call it a mushroom. It's not, has nothing to do with mushrooms, but um, yeah. it's a common way people refer to it, yeah. Amazing. But, uh, it's super easy, a lot of fun. <laughs> And you can use, you can be inventive and use whatever flavors you want. So I just heard somebody recommend to add turmeric. So you got mm -hmm. like herbs and stuff as well, not just fruit. Um, so. And yeah. apparently it's very good for you too, like, because it, it, it creates the probiotics, like in the fermenting process. Yes. Uh, yeah. Probiotics. Yeah. <laughs> probiotics. <laughs> right. Yeah, it is. It's really good. Um oh. It, I, I, there's a video on my channel where there's um, some links to uh, like a link to a bottle that I use. It's a little flip top bottle that um, it's it's easy to it's good to like bottle the kombucha in once it's done. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really very simple. All it is is just a uh, there's some loud diesel trucks outside. Oh, but, uh, the uh, but really all you need is sugar and black tea that's really about <laughs> fruit when you're done perfect i i am definitely going to do that yeah, yeah. super so, super easy I oh but i was going to say just really... watching it. <laughs> yeah yeah i know and, and there's instagram oh oh my god what is this <laughs> <laughs> um it is a great alternative to soda because it's like this bubbly fizzy drink so mm -hmm. if, i'm not i've never been into soda but for those that are really like addicted to soda that this can kind of curb their, uh, you know, cravings, I guess, for it. Because it's like a, it's, you know, it's much lower in sugar. Um, so That's an interesting concept, though. I think your channel has a lot of those moments where people, you open them up to something new. Because I was looking when you were talking, people said, like, uh, down the rabbit hole, said I had to go Google it to see what it is and stuff like that and everything. Yeah. I think you bring a lot of that to the table that people always like once again don't know what's coming and they always leave with something new that they weren't expecting and that's been a little bit of a, cha a, a challenge on my channel is i have so many interests and I, in order to kind of be successful on youtube you we have very focused audiences you know yeah. there's not too many audiences that are just into everything so if you're a van life or they want to see you in your van traveling stuff like that um you know, so, and it's, I had to kind of pick what I wanted to do. If you go back into like, um, so I, ju I started July 1st, um, like hardcore vlogging and doing YouTube like a business uh, of last year. So he doesn't know I'm here. So he, tries he tried different ways how to get attention. So <laughs> I thought, well, finally, okay, fine. <laughs> I love that, actually. I love that. I admire the tenacity. That's perfect. <laughs> I know you your van, and it is awesomely cool, and we got to get into that very soon. To be honest, when I watch your channel, I more look at it as a lifestyle channel than a van. Like, I mean, the van is part of it. It's almost like your backup singer, you know, like it's got a pretty predominant spot. But I find your channel as a whole really is like a lifestyle channel, like a homesteader and stuff like that. I find I find that's kind of where it goes, which I find really cool because it, it's you can tie so many things into that. Yeah. Um, sorry, I got a little. I got off the page there, but no problem. No problem. I was paranoid now. Oh. <laughs> me and me and Delbert Grady have had lots of adventures in the YouTube world. There's this huge, crazy world out there of YouTube isms. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. you're all set up for it. You're always ready for adventure, so. I was just waiting for him to show up. Actually, he he usually waits until uh, something funny happens. Like um, a big controversy in the van life world is okay. that um, P 
people don't go to the bathroom into a toilet um, because, you know, you're in a van. So that's a huge, huge thing that they just all talk about is that, you know, uh, mm. the buckets are involved. Anytime he sees the, a bucket in my truck, he always, you know, he'll, he'll wait to comment on that <laughs> or he'll wait to see. He just waits till the worst thing, what, the worst moment, and then he'll comment, you know. <laughs> but he's actually a huge fan. He loves me. <laughs> oh, it, it's a good community. I mean, you can, like I say, you can see the same ones commenting a lot and stuff like that, and you can tell they're into it as well. And all that. Uh, there's certain communities, homesteading ones also have a really strong community. Uh, bush, uh, 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 bushcrafters, yeah, yeah, bushcrafters. They are tight like that too. There's certain communities that are really, really well organized. And, uh, but like, I I sent a DM earlier to touring taste buds because I knew they would. Like you would be up the yes. alley for them because when they are doing, they uh, they actually were uh, bought an old. Uh, so, uh, uh, how is it called? Oh uh, my God! Arrow Stream. Yeah, uh, and they were renovating that and doing the vlogs about how they're renovating it. Like this was old, 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 and now they're on the on the, their trip, you know, yeah. uh, in it or on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I thought there would be so much uh, about all over what you are doing because it's kind of it falls into the same uh, category, you know. It's 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 interesting. It's unique. Yeah, I, you know, I really would like to. Um... I, I want to produce more videos than I than I do. It's just I don't know. You get caught up like doing the work and then making the videos and getting it all put together is uh, it's tricky sometimes. Oh, especially when you're moving the way you are, and that I mean, I think the first cut, the first live stream of yours I ever caught was you editing, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I tried that maybe, and it did, I, I can't do it. I, yeah. I have to just focus on the editing because you played my video that night because we got talking and then you played the one from made from Montreal. It starts off with that black and white scene in that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, it was the first time the we ever really one? met each other. Yeah, the eighties. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> that was. Oh I yeah, was the eighties video. That's a cool video. For sure. Oh, thank you. That's that's my that was B roll and of Montreal from the year before and a photo shoot my wife did with her niece and I just had, I had this song. And I always write around songs. I had that song for months, and then that's where that came from. So, and I think I just did it not long before we met each other. I I just wanted to uh, read something from the chat. Uh, I think Paul's truck left lets him to the other things he wants to do with his life. Emin the gang is saying. Uh, that I'm that I'm what? That uh, you uh, being like this lifestyle of of remaking the bread van and, and traveling actually um, opens up the doors to to more possibilities yeah. and letting you do what you actually want. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it it's cool because like the whole YouTube thing is like it's my world. I have a I have my own like television channel. It's crazy, you know. I would have never thought that, but yeah, I can do exactly what I dream of and. Um, yeah, so my truck is just like, I've always wanted this like whimsical, uh, feeling about my truck, like kind of like Harry Potter kind of, you know, uh, uh, Chronicles of Narnia, maybe oh, yeah. uh, just some kind of like whimsical, magical kind of feeling. So that's what I'm trying, hoping to, you know, to get from my truck, you know, so I love in my builds and my builds in general, really. Well, I'm just going to play here while you're talking. And maybe as we do play, maybe you can talk a little bit more uh, into detail. I think it, yeah. uh, about <laughs> Wow, this so this is before anything the bread truck had anything. This was like the first thing I ever shot with my drone. Uh this was right after uh getting it. I I had I still was working at the uh at the grocery store. So look inside, there's nothing in there. It's just 2 by 4s and aluminum <laughs> i took off the drone from like the rear of it but um i was brave but <laughs> i meant to tell you that that was really cool <laughs> this was my first attempt at like a drone edit i i had no idea what i was doing and it's kind of a kind of a crappy video but uh yeah this was before i really started oh they can't see the video are they <laughs> Oh, they can't see the video. Because you didn't click on the pusher. Thank you so much, Robert. Oh, Robert. sorry, sorry. Oh. Let's start from screen. the beginning. In widescreen, you can't see it. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought I was getting rid of I, all the stuff so people could see. I was me. watching the chat, so or I was watching our call, so I didn't even realize. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, it's good now. Thank you for telling us. Yes. <laughs> the um. So that's my 1989 Cummins diesel. 
four cylinder uh, bread truck. It's a uh, Utila Master. It's uh, twenty two point five feet long, from tip to tail. <clears throat> right there, I took. I'm taking off in my drone from the back of the truck, and you can see inside. There's like there's nothing in there. It's just two by fours and uh, aluminum floor. And uh, <laughs> this was this was when I first got the drone, so it's kind of uh, an experiment. Um, but um, yeah, so the truck it averages thirteen point eight miles to the gallon. Um, it dropped off a little bit. It was at fourteen miles to the gallon this whole time. Mm. Um, so it's a really efficient, big, huge space in there, and um, it's the size of a studio apartment in Manhattan that yeah. you probably pay two thousand dollars for a month. You know, I'm just gonna say that that it's such a cool idea. I love Delbert that. says Paul yeah. is a re regular Casey Neistat with the drone. <laughs> you just got some good edits, though. You got some good shots. Well, in see, the problem I was having with this, some of the edits are choppy and stuff because I was filming in 4K, mm -hmm. and my PC isn't powerful enough to uh, really process that. So I was guessing at how to do the cuts and stuff. <laughs> um, it, it couldn't live preview very well at all. So um, now I turn it down to 1080 yep. until I get a... Um, better pc and then i'll i'll be doing 4k everything after that well i, I edit in 4k but i i excuse me i shoot in 4k flat and then i edit in 1080 and then i export at 4k again and as long as you keep the same frame rates and rates and that you should be good to go you may have to you may have to school me a little bit on that because um uh, i could do my whole channel in 4k if i definitely all, all my um my drone my GoPro, everything, my camp, my cell phone. It's all 4K stuff. Well, anytime you can always message us. It's our pleasure. So, I mean, we don't have all the answers. If we don't know, we'll try to fit in with somebody who does. So, yeah, I'm very new to the editing thing. I've been using DaVinci Resolve, um, right. and it's free, and yeah. I really like it. I mean, I'm just kind of teaching myself. So, anytime you see a new trick on my channel, uh, it's like I've I looked in YouTube, like, how do you, you know, do this? And um, so that's kind of just, and that's what, that's a major message of my YouTube channel as well, is that you can come from nothing, start with your cell phone and make something of it. That's literally how I did my entire channel is with a iPhone. Uh, yeah. Back in the day, that's actually an iPhone 4. If you look way back, oh, really? there's a video, you'll see, you'll see, how uh good i looked back then um i had lost a lot of weight if you, you look at a video called this is how i do it this is actually how i do it i think okay um that video talks about i do my whole channel on my iphone i was doing it the same way back then um it's called this is how i do it you said right yeah i want to look that up it's like uh it's way back in the past <laughs> just do a search and we should have it um yeah because I, I, that's the thing like you can cell phones are amazing today especially as long as you're not shooting in like really bad lighting like dark mm -hmm. they're phenomenal the, the quality is through the roof you're getting 4k out of something you can just hold in the palm of your hand i mean it's it, yeah it's mind boggling well I, there's a i don't know the gentleman's name but he he he's known for quoting that cell phones will be the the wave of the future for filmmaking like oh. most films will be done on cell phones in the future. And like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Everything has been going to smaller. And I mean, cell phones fit right yeah, into it. Oh, I'm just going to click you back here. I have too many windows open tonight. That's my problem. But you know, you're not that far from, I mean, you're, you're, you'll have no trouble getting back to that. Well, that's the thing is I already know how to do it. I just have to put it into action. Delbert Grady, Grady's going to love this comment. He always uh talks about it but uh you know once my truck's ready i'll be able to make my diet clean again um do a little bit of juicing maybe grow some wheatgrass um <laughs> and uh really get back to uh 70 pounds lighter that's really my goal is to get to 200 pounds well i think you've shown yourself already there's nothing you can't do yeah this video what's the date on that is uh 2010 2010, yeah.
Yeah, I'm talking about, yeah, 2010. I'm talking about in this video how I did my whole channel on, um, just on my, uh, iPhone. On my cell phone. <laughs> but oh, I, I have something to, uh, celebrate, guys. Oh, I was just looking at my channel and I'm now over 200, 2,900, yep. uh, subscribers. Cheap. That just happened. Yes. So thank you. Uh, <laughs> 2,913 now. Actually. Yeah, thank you. I, I was done. actually following that in, because in the morning I noticed it was uh, two, uh, it was 89, it was one uh, less, you know, for 2,900. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. And yeah. then uh, this evening when I checked again, it was uh, 29 on the dot. And I just checked again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been growing it, just through the that. day. That's amazing. Awesome. Yeah, it's been it's been growing really well. I uh, I'm really proud of where my channel's at. I I think it, you know uh, <laughs> Delbert he always takes responsibility for uh, for all of the subs. Most of the people who are subscribed are him. I love it. Actually, you brought us some good people too. We just shot up another ten. We're up to eighteen ten. So oh, that's awesome. awesome! We hit eighteen hundred last night. Showed it. We went to eighteen oh one, and then we dropped to seventeen ninety three. So <laughs> that's so a bummer. Like... And I hate it when people unsubscribe. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they didn't like what we were doing yesterday night, but that's okay. We're good. We're going. Awesome. Yeah. Congratulations! That's Thank great. Thank you so much. We had forty two subscribers in February. Oh wow, that's awesome! Yeah. I'd given up on the whole thing completely. Like we were done because this was a sideline where I got to do things that I couldn't do with our clients. <clears throat> and I said, "The hell with it! I'm done. I'm, I mean, I'm not putting 30 hours editing into something for nobody to watch for 20, you know, 20 views. Mm -hmm. I don't care about money. It wasn't to monetize. Just somebody to to give it to them, you know. And I gave up on too. And it was actually Peter McKinnon did a video about you know, oh, this is your opportunity to get back in it. And I'm like, ah, shut up. <laughs> you got a bunch of subscribers. And then I thought about it, and I, I kind of like him. And I said, you know what? I looked at Xenia. Let's just give it one last try. Yeah. You know? it, it's I, so funny. People, things change so quickly. Yeah. And, and people are – I'll talk to people all the time that are talk, thinking about starting up a channel or uh, interested in it. And I'm like, you can do it. I, I was – I had nothing going on, you know, nine months ago or however long ago, uh, 10 months ago. Nothing, nobody was watching my videos. I would drop one and there would be crickets. Literally, like I'd get 19 views over a week. And I didn't get a subscriber every day. I got a subscriber maybe once a week, you know? And yep. I just kept putting videos out consistently and just making videos for fun and putting them out there. And um, people... Things change so much. People are like, no, you had an easy time of it. You are, you have 3,000 subscribers or whatever. I'm like, you don't understand. Like, yeah. I went through months of silence. I promise you. <laughs> that <laughs> Nobody is, was watching for a long time. It's a lot of, like you said, crickets. Is, I remember telling her one time, like, oh, my God, three people after two weeks. And, you know, I went back on. And I don't know if you've seen tonight we showed our wedding video. That's on our uh, personal YouTube, there's only like two videos. Yeah. No tags, no promotion, never looked at the damn thing for two years. I find it this year, it has 28,000 views. I was like, <laughs> what is going on here? You know, like yeah. you're killing me. That's it's so strange. strange. But it has Iceland wedding, uh, Iceland wedding Viking. And, the, you know, that was kind of the buzzword. So it just happened to get that yeah. on. Well, it sounds, yeah. The title sounds pretty badass. Iceland Viking yeah. wedding. Yeah. That's... Yeah. It's tough. <laughs> well, she got, that was her way to convince me to get married again. So I got to give her credit. She well, like you proposed me like years before that, and then you know it kind of, kind of life took took its own course, so to say. And yeah. and then uh, I knew he wanted to go to Iceland, like since he was like grade six when he did the project on it, like back when. <laughs> So I started to talk about it and kind of did a, a you know a second uh, <laughs> proposal and then so why don't we get married there and go to Iceland and we did yep. yeah I know it, we it looked beautiful it was February was... February yeah we started to talk about it in February I, I brought up the idea and in July we got married yep. that's, that's awesome <laughs> yeah it looked it looked amazing. Thank you. Well, we're kind of the see that's the great thing about Xenia. she brought back some that's why I said I, my forties have been great. Because we met on that video game, just complete fluke, and we've we when I flew over, you know, and we just kind of hit it off, and it's been kind of a whirlwind, you know. Got to travel, do all kinds of great things that I've always wanted to do, and she's even convinced me. Like when I went by train, I did twelve countries in fifteen days. 
I went all the way from Brussels to Croatia and back up by train every day getting off in a new country. And hmm. she was the inspiration for all that. She's the one who got me to do it. My uncle died. He we both came from a small town. He traveled and I always wanted to. And I was kind of I sold my sign company business we had and decided. And so yeah, you know, there's never too late to get into stuff. And I yeah. love what you're doing. I love the message into it. I really do think you inspire people. I hope so. Um, yeah, I think my people are, you know, I, I can look at the demographics on my channel and see that the people are watching my channel are people my age, people yeah. who are in my shoes, almost, yeah. you know, like uh, we're the same type of people. Maybe there's a lot of people out there that got kind of a late start in life. And um, it, it's, I don't know, it, it's never too late. So hopefully um, there's some, you know, I have a voice that. I think people, some people have been like waiting for someone like you to come along. Like that, that does happen with YouTube. People do wait for that. It opened up the world because years ago before the internet, we could never meet in groups like this. You know, people that had the similar interests, you always thought you were like one of a kind and not in a good way. You know, nobody understands me. I don't know where I fit in and all this. But the, the internet opened all that up and we got to connect people that do have similar interests. Right. And I think, I don't know, I, I hope that it really, I hope that my channel really does go somewhere like that because, um, you know, I, I have a few goals in mind and um, one of my, he's, he was here actually, um, Leroy Jenkins is a follower that has been on a lot, but he's, he looked into like Social Blade and the projections for my channel are like uh, 10,000 subscribers by December 1st this year. Um, yeah. So at my current growth, but I really am shooting for like 20,000 by January 1st, 2018. So um, that's kind of what I'm looking for, looking, you know, as for like a, my, my goal. But um, I don't know. I would I would really love it if I had 100,000 subscribers. I, I, I really get a kick out of um, making um, video. I try to make it at a higher quality. I try to make them like TV shows, my episodes. Yeah. Um, and I, I think they're fun to sit and watch, you know, you can, they may be 10 to 20 minutes long, but, um, I don't know. I watch my old videos my sometimes, like I like the music and stuff like that. I think, uh, I don't know. I, I would really, I would love it if YouTube actually, like, I never really looked at YouTube as being a career option, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> if it takes off and I can do really well like casey neistat numbers then <laughs> i'm all for it you know i watch your show and i sometimes i was watching some of the videos thinking that actually i could i was thinking i could see this getting picked up by the travel channel or something like that yeah I, i've thought that on a couple of them i was that was that kind of crossed my mind it does have and i like that you've always been up in your quality i can see it i can see where you keep pushing yourself because i always say this to people i tip my hat off to people that have interest because you already put a lot of work into your interest and then you decide you know what this is not enough work as it already is now i'm going to learn video editing now i'm going to learn tags now i'm going to learn how you know all these things that come with being on youtube on top of what you already do yeah and i have to talk to every one of you that do that yeah i thank you uh, and i'll tell you what it has been difficult this past month because um i've been exhausted i'm building this yeah. truck and um, but, uh, I'm a little burned out. I'm a little burned out. I'm ready to kick back and relax and enjoy my truck for a little while. Definitely. But, um, it, it, it's been a, it's been an awesome renovation, you know, like this upgrade is amazing. So, um, it, it's taking my truck to almost nearly completed status, you know? I um, love the energy you put into it when you show off as you're doing the work, not show off, like showing off, like the, yeah. the, the passion into what you're doing. You can see just how happy you are with things are going the way they're going. I love that about your channel. And I, I think at the same time, you'll see kind of the same, um, the same attitude. I, I try to do that even when things aren't going well. Um, yeah, I try to keep that same positive attitude when, uh, you know, uh, like I, I have, if I have a breakdown or whatever, you know, so. It's therapeutic for you, I the van. Would you say? I'm sorry. What was that? 
would you say that the work like the van itself plus like working on it, renovating is kind of therapeutic for you oh absolutely i love it i love having that um that outlet um that's one downside of living the van life is that it, it is really difficult to like build stuff and i don't know i'm the type of guy i like to have things set up so um I've been super lucky this uh I've made a new friend uh Nelson that where I'm at right now um he is allowed um I I've it's been a great trade off actually I I've done some projects at his house we're kind of trading some work for uh the um <laughs> you're showing me in the shower <laughs> I had such I love I this is like such a part of your personality they're so open and honest like it was amazing <laughs> I was I love this. Did you, did you hear the harp sound effect that yeah. I put in? On it? <laughs> One eternity later. <laughs> because when I filmed the first part of this episode like two weeks before I filmed the end of it. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Delbert Grady I... loves this episode. This is his favorite. It's my, my shower episode. Oh, no. It's fun. It's so honest. The channel is honest. That's what it... Because you look like even if you didn't make a cent off it, you would still want to do it just because of the passion into everything of it, you know. And that's yeah. what really good YouTube videos, I and mean, they're the ones that usually take off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. The, so what, uh, what gets you into the van idea? Like what? Like that's the next story. I guess we're going to cover is this like what led you to the van? What like the um, idea? Well, I, I'm I'm into vans uh, as far as like collector cars go, uh, things like that. I've always thought vans were cool. Um, yeah. I've always thought bread trucks were cool because they're just so basic. It's a big square box, and um, they're they're odd. You know, they're very utilitarian and quirky. Uh, yeah, they just do their job. You know, um, but I kind of like the style of that. So. I would love to like hot rod one and put yes. airbags on it and slam it on the ground and throw sparks and I really do something wild with it, you know? Um, but um, so I've been in the vans. I'm a member of a van club in Orlando called uh, the Orlando van club. Um, and there's a bunch of Volkswagens, but it's the van community is really cool. They're very open to it. it there's I don't know. There's a lot of car groups that are very elitist. You know, if you're a classic Mustang guy, yeah. if you have anything else, your gar car is garbage. You know, um, that's right. Yeah. So the van community is very nice, like that. Very welcoming. We have a guy in our van club that drives a dune buggy, but the <laughs> dune buggy was made out of a VW bus frame. I mean, it's a VW bus that he just ripped the body off of. So, oh. I mean, that's how inclusive we are. You know, so. um I know, that's kind of cool. The I've always been into it. I love the videos on YouTube, you know, so I've been seeing the van life videos and uh, been watching those for uh, years, you know. Right. <clears throat> um, I don't know. I've always liked the idea of uh, traveling, too. I haven't traveled in my life. I've always wanted to get out and see the country, and I've never had the opportunity to. So um, that was another big part of it. I could just hit the road and go wherever I want. Um, that was one of the first things after I, uh, once after I like left Orlando, I went to my sister's first. And after my sister's, I had this like aha moment. And I just realized that like, I can go anywhere I choose to go. I'm like, I didn't know where I was going to go next. And I'm like, I opened a map up and I'm like, wow, this is cool. Like, I don't know. I just never had an open ended thing like that. Nice. So, I set my sights on Colorado, and I drove to a dispensary first thing. <laughs> yeah. We got to touch on the 420 stuff as well. <laughs> uh, starting October, you can start coming to Canada. Oh, yeah, in October? Yep. Yeah, October some, uh, uh, Recreational yeah. there? Yep. Yeah, or legal oh, wow. all across the board. So. <laughs> Problem, I, I will be coming to Canada. I need to get my passport really bad. Um, because I want to go to Canada and Mexico. My dad will have a heart attack when I go to Mexico. But uh, other than that, you know, I, I want to see the Great White North, man. I think that's my type of area. I love the cold weather, and um, I don't know how capable my bread truck might be, but oh, I, I have, think it'd be okay, you think? If I stick I to the big cities, I think it'd be okay. 
I swear to God, like I honestly think you would just walk in and be like an honorary Canadian. You do have yeah. a lot of Canadian tendency in you. The whole thing going on. Oh yeah, I think you could kind of just walk right in and blend in. You know, like, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. I have uh, a lot of good Canadian friends, van lifers. You meet Canadians a lot because they come down for the summer. Yeah. Um, it sucks when they have to leave though. They can only stay till six yeah. months, and you have to go. No yeah. questions, you know. That's so. One, uh, hard parts about between different borders, but at least you get some time to enjoy. But yeah, that is, believe me, we know all about borders. <laughs> we, we're, we're quite familiar with them. Oh <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Um, do you, yeah. I have a oh, question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, when you are going on your travel, travel like uh, do you plan ahead, like your spots where you're gonna go or how far ahead you plan or you just go yeah. wherever you land or like how, how yeah. does that process go? It, it, it's totally random. I have no plans whatsoever. It's like, I should be a, probably a little more structured. I don't look at weather or the time of year, like the season it is. Um, I don't look at like, um, I don't know. I just kind of just, I, I did have a goal. Like one of my goals was to make it to the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous, right. which was in January January 10th in Quartzsite, Arizona. So that was uh, that was one stop that I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to go see my friend in um, San Diego, who's in the Marines. Um, the uh, My friend who's in the Marines in... Um, what's it called? Um, oh, uh, Miramar. He's at Miramar in okay. San Diego. So I went out there and, and uh, stayed out there for a while, did some building on my truck with them. That was cool. Um, Actually, I like those. Videos. Yeah, he's the one with the little kids. They're, they're awesome. They're like my, uh, they call me Uncle Polly and stuff now, but um, cool. they're the coolest kids ever. They're so cool. Um, I, I'd like to make a video because I just gave them my cameras and they were playing like YouTube, you know? So I have like hours of footage of them with their cameras do off doing their own episode. Oh, and, really? Uh, I, and I can make it into like a funny episode. I know it. There's like some that. like there's some good sister on sister like. <laughs> oh, yeah. that yeah, that'd like, be interesting. Tension. Watch. <laughs> they were like fighting each other a little bit. Like <laughs> you better give it back. <laughs> it's funny. You really enjoyed your time there. Right? You can see it in your face. You're like, kind yeah. Of um, my friends that I have in San Diego in San Diego are um, are like family. You know, they're not they're not related. But um, my on Christmas Day, I had it, I always had it in mind that I should go to Disneyland because uh, I grew up in Orlando. I worked at Disneyland for several years, and uh, oh. I've been there hundreds of times, literally. Right. Um, so I always thought I should go to the original. You know, and uh, we all decided to go on uh, on Christmas Day and. It was just an outstanding day. It was a great video. Uh, if you like Christmas, I think you'll, you know. I love knows. Christmas. Yeah, it's a good Christmas video. It's very Christmassy. Yeah, look at that. I thought I would share that with you. <laughs> it just went up as you clicked it. That's right. <laughs> That's great. Twenty nine nineteen. They're doing good. It's always good to see. <laughs> well, thank you so much, guys. I, oh, well, every time I've collaborated with another channel, it's been awesome. Yeah, um, it, that's a great about thing about this community. There's no competition. Every yep. time you work with somebody, it's cooperation and it's all helpful. So it's so cool. It's a brotherhood, you know, and yeah. that's I, I like seeing that. You know, every there's certain groups that are like the certain communities, like uh, like I say once again, like bushwhacker ones. I find like that homesteaders, uh, bushcrafter. <laughs> my God. <laughs> Now I make them sound like barbarians. Oh, Jeez. I didn't uh, realize I saw the old bushwhacker from wrestling. They're going to love it. Yeah. They hear this one. <laughs> like, they have a guy that's kind of like semi, the, I guess you call him kind of their their leader, Yankee. And the guy, you wouldn't even think he was the leader of the group. Like, you can't even tell. You know, those. And I've noticed that in some of the groups. Just so nice. And everybody's supporting each other. When one comes, they all come. And, yeah. you know. and you meet good people along the way. Like, that's what I've said about these, like, for us. This is where we introduce a lot of specialty channels to the gray area more. You know, people that don't do it full time but are interested into it. And that's a great group to have as well. They might yeah. get into it or they like aspects of it, you know. And mm -hmm. It's good to have a gray side because it gets you a bit out of your boundaries, you know, working them with your core. So, 
Yeah. And, and you know, you know, who knows where it might lead to. I mean, I have friends that um, want to do stuff and you never know. It, it, I, I know there's a, like, there's a guy on uh, YouTube that made a video about a property bought for 350 bucks at an auction. It turned into like a viral thing, like an abandoned exploration because there was a house on his property. But, the guy said, you know, the simple, stupid video of filming this house he made created a um, a big um, it created like a big um, uh, a big amount of attention to his, his real estate business and his real estate business has never been more successful, you know, so it, wow. can, it, can, it can lead to different things, you know, like um, so I don't know if people are interested, I hope that uh, they'll at least make a video. Make some. I tell those people all the time too. Take whatever you have, make the best video you can make, and then post it on video on YouTube, and it'll be fun, you know. <laughs> Speaking of fun, do you know who you remind me of? Uh, Chris Farley. No. Nope. <laughs> oh, Mike, Mikey. I love Mike. You remind me so much of Mikey, and it just hit me too. Wait, is that, no, it's not Vinny. Vinny. I'm sorry. Vinny. Vinny. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> You remind me so much of him, the way you talk and the goatee and everything else. I've been, I've been driving me crazy the whole time you're on, and I finally got it. <laughs> That's what it is. And he was well, my. I wish, I, wish I could build daughter. like him. If I could build like him, I'd be happy. Well, um, maybe, I think you're already on your way. <laughs> I have a I have a really interesting thing that's coming up. Like one of my stops that's coming up soon after I leave Oregon and Washington right. is uh, in Montana. I met up with this guy in Vegas, uh, and he had this rat rod truck. Incredible wow. truck. He built it out of rusty parts, but had the same motor as my truck. And uh, and he kind of invited me to come out. I want to help him get his YouTube channel off the ground because he does he has no idea what he's doing with it. But I'm going to go out there and produce a video with him for his oh. channel. I'm going to also feature it on mine. But this this guy has a, a truck that he built. That's It's really it's something spectacular. It really is. It, it, it'll be million of views. I, I, it should be if I do it right. I mean, the truck's outstanding, though. So, and I'm gonna be staying out in Montana, so I may be able to. He's a fabricator. Um, he has a whole property with like filled with reclaimed wood and wow. rusty metal car parts and stuff like that. Um, so I have an opportunity to go out there and, uh, you know, at least make a video with the guy and. See what man Montana's all about. So I'm really excited about that. I'll be coming up in the next month. Man, the world is your oyster right now. <laughs> I love it. Living the dream, as yes. you were saying on your banner. Yeah, yeah. I kind of put that up there as a joke. It's funny yeah. how that phrase has changed because I used to use that all the time in the job that I hated sarcastically. Oh. You know, when I would use that all the time and I put it up there as like a joke when I first quit my job and, you know, I showed my old coworkers and stuff, my YouTube channel, my, my thing I would say a lot is on there. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, I, I think I like it. I'm gonna leave it there now. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah I, I love it. It's become your anthem. I mean, you right? know, and you're living it up. So, and good for you for doing that. I mean, really, uh, you're in control of your own destiny. And the guy that couldn't, Talk to girls years ago. Now look where you are, and look what you're doing. I mean, talk about doing a, a, a one knee with your life. I mean, it's absolutely phenomenal, really impressive. That's why I gravitated to your channel. Remember, I asked you even back then. We had, and then we hadn't talked for a couple of weeks, but right away when we were on doing that live stream, I said, "God, you'd be great on the to, to have as a guest." <laughs> we just yeah. kind of started doing it, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I just I realized years ago that. Um, I had an epiphany and I realized that I was the controller. I was the one that I was the one that had to do everything. Like things don't just, there's no perfect timing. There's no great smooth entrance into the world or anything like that. Things yeah. don't flesh themselves out just naturally. You have to make it happen for yourself as awkward and bumbling as it might be. Yep. If you do it, you'll get results, at least some kind of results, negative, positive, but it, I don't know that I've, I've, I have a knack for sales a little bit and a major thing in sales. And I think it applies to life is um, don't get discouraged by someone that tells you no, um, yeah. you're going to get told no nine times for every one. Yes. Maybe yeah. more, maybe a hundred times maybe, until you get a yes. But 
if you don't stop at some people hear that word one time and it shuts them down they're like i'm not going to try that ever again yep. you know um and i just realized at age 32 33 i forget exactly when but i just realized then that um it was i was the one that was in control and i could create anything i wanted to so i started creating good stuff rather than bad stuff <laughs> I, I absolutely love it what an attitude to have your whole it opens up a whole new world yeah no yeah it, it's funny because i i tell people and I, this is my philosophy i don't know if um it's you know i i kind of don't have those christian views i had back in high school anymore but i kind of feel like i am the uh creator of my, my life Mm -hmm. um, everything I experience is a uh, manifestation of my own mind. Um, right. And um, the uh, if you take responsibility for all those bad things that happen, you got in a car accident that horribly impacted your life. If you can realize that you created even bad things that happened to you, whatever your frame of mind was, whatever you're focusing on may have not been right at the time or, um, whatever it gives you the power to create all the good in your life you know like i i could totally see how i created i i don't i don't know how it fits in but even random uh occurrences that i i saw as bad in the long run i i think we're supposed to happen for whatever reason you know I bring up the example of the show Dragons Den, and well, then later on became like the Shark Tank and uh, Shark Tank in the States, where they all go. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. And I mean, those guys. If you watch those shows, they the, the the panel themselves, eight out of ten times when they talk about themselves, they don't talk about their successes. They always talked about their failures, because that was almost more important to them than their successes, because that's what built them to what they were. Yeah, is that's yeah. the part of the learning process. And they don't say it was shame, like, you know, oh, I can't believe I didn't do it. They, you could see that it was epiphany of where it took them to the next level. And people mm -hmm. don't, that don't pay attention to their mistakes don't grow. And mistakes are important. If you're not making mistakes, you're not taking chances. Right. Yeah. And, and look at all the chances you're taking now, but look at all the rewards you're gaining at the same time. Yeah, it's definitely a different thing. To It's, it's kind of like walking off a cliff, you know? But... uh feels good though right. doesn't <laughs> it, it does absolutely I, I feel more free than i've ever felt in my life uh and wow. i i was sitting back in my chair the other day and i was just like i just had this feeling of like ultimate freedom i, I don't know it's i get to do whatever i want to do i i wish to create positive things i want to um enrich other people's lives you know but um by building stupid stuff you know like uh I, I love repurposing materials and creating something livable out of garbage I, I think that's it's just awesome and if it can get you out of debt at the same time i think that's uh you know well especially the the, the millennials are so much more into that idea now they looked at their parents and they're like i don't want the 30 40 year mortgage you know they started looking at micro homes start looking at container homes we love container so, homes like i always have to ask you like I, I get this a lot because we're around the same age i'm like jesus i was born in the wrong generation like i like what these guys are doing i like their mentality and we've been incorporating it into our lives for a good while now yeah like our grocery bill we've had it about 250 dollars a month for four where most people here are spending a thousand because we yeah. go to stores where they sell the seconds on everything they're not bad mm -hmm. they're just not the perfectly wholesale shaped stores, yeah wholesale yeah. stores yeah we we buy things like chicken and we buy it in bulk and freeze it. We cut it up ourselves. We don't let the butcher do most of the work. Right. Reuse stuff. Like when I see that something is about to start to go bad, I freeze it. Yep. And, and then, you know, make uh, muffins or smoothies or whatever with the stuff that is in the freezer from cut up mm. uh, fruits or vegetables. I save up for soups and same as bones from chicken, things yep. like that. So. Like we get our kids involved with it. I want them to learn that. I want them to see that you don't need to spend every cent you got to be happy. That's my right. biggest goal in life. And I that was something I got with Xenia was we're not living like poppers. I mean, we don't, it's not like we don't have a roof over our kid's head. It's just we don't go blowing in on everything that passes us by every second. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It, you know, um, that's kind of the reason why I'm getting into fermented foods, too, is to really stretch 
your food dollars out. A lot of times you have food that you can't consume or I don't know, um, with fermented foods, you can store it for a really long time and it actually makes it more powerful of a food. You know, it has that um, probiotics, uh, the natural good gut bacteria. Yep. Um, a lot of people look at fermented foods as like it's kind of icky or gross, but um, um, that's going to be a big focus in my truck as well as fermented foods and tea. Mm -hmm. it's just healthy living you know uh, we've gotten away from what people who shop at a grocery store have no idea what's nutritional value oh definitely uh, it, it's we're, we're fed poison really it's the costco era like everything is comes out of costco and i have friends that say to me well oh you like saving money why don't you go to costco and i'm like costco is the biggest money grab there is because it's nothing but processed food in large amounts overpriced and you just all go like sheep thinking oh well if i got it at costco it has to be cheap yeah, it goes bad and can't be reused because it's processed. It, it, by doing by staying away from places like Costco, we've actually pretty much cut out a lot of the processed food in our. Yeah, and so we have it on occasion. Yeah, it's yeah. like we don't have it. Uh, you know, we it's, it's just it it's bulk. not in a bulk at home. Mm -hmm. We if we want it, then we go and get it. Like but last night, we went and got pizza pockets for supper because we were busy and, yeah. and it was hot. Yeah. But we don't keep like ten boxes of them ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I freeze soup like when I do make soup from those collected vegetables and bones mm -hmm. oftentimes we have some but then the rest I freeze up you know because nobody has a whole pot of soup right away so might as well freeze it up and then our oldest son for example he loves it so I just <laughs> give it to him and he has his lunch you know so I think, uh, I think we're kind of you know, have you guys seen the movie Idiocracy I've heard of it. I haven't seen it, oh, though. It's, it's a must-watch. It's like, what is happening to our society? Um, but they have Costco in the movie, and it's 500 years in the future, and uh, Costco is the size of, like, Manhattan. It's huge. Oh, my God. This gigantic building. But uh, it, it's just a funny pr portrayal of what Costco is going to be like in the future because it's exactly what you're talking about, this huge conglomeration of... Yep. Uh, processed food that make people unhealthy and uh, it's funny when you walk in the door there's a greeter standing there and every person he greets uh, with hello he's like welcome to Costco I love you welcome <laughs> to Costco I love you that's like his greeting to everybody <laughs> in the future so Victor from St. Otto he says you have to see the movie and he wrote above it I love <laughs> buy in bulk you eat in bulk you become bulk and he's right yeah Right, absolutely. It does. It kills your willpower. If you buy 250 fudgicles and set them in your freezer, don't tell me you're having one every two weeks. No, you know, I have two or three at one time. Exactly, because they're there. There's no control over it. We're all human. Yeah. <coughs> you know? Yeah, when you go to a grocery store, for the most part, you don't buy anything on any aisle. You just shop the perimeter, you yep. know? That's uh, right. Even on the perimeter, there's a lot of garbage there as well. Yep. But, uh, yep. That's one kind of guideline but it's like we're like some people go further than others and that's good we're not waving the flag and saying we never have it it's just we don't need it every single day and we don't even need it every single week sometimes it's not so the, our kids now see it more as a treat than a mainstay and i'm hoping by that when they get older they'll still keep it that way because they started off from that idea well and they will you know i never grew up on soda my mother was just too cheap to buy it but um it was a great habit because i love water i just drink water all the time so i don't have um that habit of drinking sodas I, it, that thing it does um it does stick with kids it's definitely important you know we travel with them a lot of too and not like you do you, you're taking it to the next level which i'm so in love with your thing like don't i love it i live i'm gonna live vicariously through you as you're <laughs> But we've taken the kids, like, we go all traveling. We just take off for weekends going through all of Canada. We've also took the kids to Iceland. We spent six days in a Honda Civic with no hotels. Nice. Four and an, uh, four and an eight-year-old in the back seat. And we, like, they bathed in, like, natural water springs. We, and people say, like, oh, how do you do that to your kids? The kids had a fantastic time. They were stretched out. You know, we just, I don't want them to think it always has to be in a five-star hotel. We've gone tons of places like that. Just, yes, you know, exactly. Off the grid. Pick up more. a bag and yeah. non touristy spots. We then went to Denmark. We stayed one night at a friend's house, then went to Denmark for another four days, and we slept in an Audi A5 and just traveled all through Denmark. Nice. I want to be I want to be tired when I come home. 
I, I don't use vacations for rest. They're not vacations, they're traveling. <laughs> There's a difference. Yeah. Yeah, it is, a, it is a bit of work to travel, you know? If you want to have a staycation, that's doing nothing, you know? Yeah, and that's uh, okay if that's what you want to do. I'm not knocking anybody for yeah. it. No, I've had a few. <laughs> when I was back at the grocery store, mm-hmm. I didn't have the energy to, to go on vacation because it is, it's a bit, it's more strenuous than, you know, just couch potato. Yep. <laughs> for sure. I agree. I agree. But, and I always, I believe, I, you know, I've read a lot of quotes from the past of great uh, historical figures that have changed history. And they all kind of agree on the same thing is that you are what you think about. You become what you think about, you know, and um, that. Um, oh, what was the other one? I was just going to think of you. You become what you think about. And. Um, oh, my God. What was I just I just totally spaced out. That's OK. We do that all the time. <laughs> no worries. It's really good advice, guys. I'm telling you, this is golden. Just bear yep. with me. <laughs> That's saying hi to you, by the way, Mechanic Steve. Oh yeah, Mechanic Steve. I, I, I see uh, all my buddies are here. Mechanic Steve and Karen, my boo, um, Janice. I mean, there's tons. Oh, what happened? Why did it go off? Okay, there we go. But uh, yeah, I got to say hi to everybody. But um, oh man. Oh, it the quote, I, I don't even know what the quote is about, but it's, it's about um, getting outside of your comfort zone. Um, right. And my whole point of this trip was to get a little uncomfortable. I've been comfortable. I don't want to be comfortable anymore. Um, I want to feel the, those um, those growing pains. Those things are productive, and that's what change is all about. So, and there's been a lot of um, uh, quotes in the past about you know uh, success lying outside of your comfort zone and things of that nature. So that was another big part of my journey was I wasn't really trying to have a comfy, cushy trip, you know? Yeah. Um, I think, it, I think it's great to get in your uh, station wagon, your SUV and just hit the road and have no destination and just, you know, in getting lost, you find yourself kind of thing. <laughs> I love that. I love yeah. that. Couldn't agree with you more. It's so true. Yeah. You know, people said to me when I used to travel like that, going on my own, like, oh, my God, what are you going to do? And then I'm like, I live my life with rules. I got two kids. I got a wife, got a business. My life is nothing but, like, you know, places I got to be and where I got to go. Yeah. So for two weeks to not have to live by a cl- – well, yes, there's like a plane you got to catch here or there or something. You can or make it on your own. Yeah, yeah you know, uh, sleeping in a car is the greatest thing in the world to me. Traveling light yeah. is the greatest thing in the world to me it's oh i love driving at night that's awesome yes yeah, <laughs> yeah it's it's local. kids love that too i mean one of my okay. most fond memories is my parents took me uh dumpster diving when i was a kid really? uh, yeah it was me and my sister and my mom and dad and my dad's brother uh and his wife and his two boys um we had this huge uh, eight passenger, nine passenger van or something. Okay. And we just drove around in the middle of the night in Chicago and picked things out of the trash and dumpsters and stuff. It was awesome. It was one of my favorite nights ever. That was so cool. And it, uh, what a ridiculous thing. We were picking stuff out of the garbage, you know. But well, I, I still do that to this day. So most of the stuff you see in my truck came out of a dumpster or in the trash, you know, so. I don't want to be too personal, but I have to ask you, like, about family. What was your mom and dad like? What, if you don't mind talking about them for a little bit. No, no, not at all. Um, I would like to take a bathroom break because I've been hitting that jug of water too much. <laughs> but <laughs> I, let me, I'll, tell, I'll, I'll finish this up, and then I'm going to go uh, to the restroom. But, um, no, my, my parents were married, I, um, you know, all through high school and stuff. I think they kind of, you know, had some – disgruntled feelings for each other things you know it wasn't certainly any kind of romantic relationship right. but um they stayed together for me and my sister pretty much and they were excellent parents excellent i mean um my dad was a hard worker um he worked 50 hours a week at least sometimes 60 but you know he supported the family my mom didn't did really do uh he was in the printing business Oh. Um, so back in the day before computers, a computer ended up taking his job, but, right. um, he was in the printing business. So he was like a cameraman that would shoot, 
uh, the plates that would go into a press that would run uh -huh. sheets of paper through. So yeah. the process is totally different now. So yeah, um, that job just kind of disappeared. So it kind of coincided with him retiring. He okay. retired a little earlier than he wanted to, but he's also a Navy man. So he's retired. Uh, he was wounded in Vietnam. So uh -huh. he has, you know, Navy um, retirement as well, or, or like, however that works, you know, right. but um, yeah, so he's, he's retired now, but my mom died about five years ago. So she's been gone for maybe five or six oh. years. I forget exactly when. Sorry, Sorry hear that. Lost, yeah. yeah, that's okay. That's all right. She was um, a big part of, you know, like what, uh, and I kind of like, me like waking up and re realizing that I am responsible for my life and she kind of went in the other direction she was very unhealthy and um, she spoke a lot about pain and stuff like that and um, and she was in a lot of pain but um, I don't know, it kind of seems like a lot of it was kind of put on herself um, right and I don't know I, I just I think hopefully she was on dialysis like um uh, three times a week or four times a week, something like that. Um, she just had every health ailment that there could be, you know, and right. uh, that kind of like, uh, um, my, my dad, like he was always, he was always so rock solid, you know, he had right. lost his job here and there. And, um, but always, you know, we didn't have a, we were very poor growing up, not very poor, but um, mm. certainly very low middle class if that. Right, not um, in excess. Right, right. And, um, but, you know, it maybe my dad wasn't all that happy all those years, you know, with mm. his relationship with my mom, but uh, they were always excellent parents. Like, he still made time to do baseball games and coach. And all that kind of stuff, you know? We went on yeah. family vacations and um, did all those kind of things. And they were they were great. They were really excellent parents. And my dad, he, he's one of my best friends, you know? Uh, he's in Orlando still. And uh, I know he would love this lifestyle. I freaking yeah. know it. He, he's, he's one step away from being a hobo already. Oh, really? And, yeah, he could make... He's happy with opening, like, a can of beans for dinner. I'll just have a can of beans and just, like... <laughs> You know, like he takes oh, wow. very little to, to sustain himself. Um, and uh, but I got I found him an RV, it's actually a Toyota Chinook, it's a little mini RV. It's, it's in Orlando, it's a pop top camper. Okay, uh, it needs some more work, but I'm hoping that he'll go on a trip in that. It's oh. a it's a radical, it's a 1976, it's a radical oh. vintage vehicle. Um, if you load up my channel, yeah. um, I'll let you like maybe look at this if that's okay while I use the yeah. restroom. Yeah, I'll go right ahead. Um, what? It's back, back in the day, like vlog number 14 on my what? channel, uh, something like that. Let me see, number 11. Actually, you know what? I'll copy and paste the link right now because I have, I, I'll just put it into your uh, perfect thing, yeah. Here we go. Oh, I can computer pretty good. All right. And if you go to that video, yeah, uh, perfect. You, you can you can see like um, what the van looks like. There's some slideshow at the beginning, and then if you skip ahead to the end, to okay. like uh, eleven minutes in, once you get through the slideshow at the beginning, you know it's just me sitting in the truck most of it talking. But I'll be right back. Okay. Oh, sorry. You go. No problem. Um, just uh, for everybody in the chat, hello, hello. I see lots of people uh, jumping in, so welcome everybody who is new to our channel. I just wanted to. Yes, definitely. Oh, please can talk over and uh, shared a lot with us already. Wow. Oh yes. Oh my God, I, I, I pressed the wrong button, so I can't see now the chat. Uh, just a second. We'll be back momentarily. I can. You guys still watch the slideshow? <clears throat> Pardon me. I think they also. Yes, best friend duty calls. 
uh, um, there, there were other videos beforehand where he actually purchased an older uh, Volkswagen Beetle. Yes. Which is really cool. I don't know why I'm so attached to them. I, I know you're not. But I, I knew that was going to be discussed with you. Well, when I seen it, I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> Moving all the windows around, I must have clicked the pause button by accident. Oh. I think we lost so much sleep trying to fight everything the other day that we're still kind of like trying to get caught up. <laughs> He's so amazing. I, I no, Doodle says totally love that ra rat rod truck he found in the Vegas 420 event. Guys, this is the kind of channel we're always trying to bring you as new groups. Like, and, and, and this is a great example of it. And uh, if you guys ever know anybody else like this, <coughs> always let us know if we haven't found them yet. Because this, this kind of stuff appeals to so many people. You know, you don't have to be, it doesn't have to be your day-to-day -day interest as you do in your channel, but there's always that gray area, and I love that gray area. Oh, All right, I'm back. Oh, Sorry thank you so much for coming by tonight. You have a great night, my friend. Always love having you here. Got to have you on soon. So you see how my living room is just like blowing around behind me there? I, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. Fun. Oh my yeah. god, you never always see it. <laughs> I love it. So that's the that's the ride I was trying to get my dad set up with. We've done some work on it, but it needs more work. But uh, <laughs> I love it. So I mean that's kind of like my channel has that's a really good performing video as well. It's got two thousand, yeah. three thousand views or something. Um but um the uh Sorry. My video, my channel does have a lot of varied, um, uh, you know, interests. I have a 72 bus that is getting a new motor right now. It's going to be running and driving like within, uh, I don't know, maybe a month or two. Uh, 72 Volkswagen pop top uh, Westphalia camper. Um, it's It looks like a sea creature. It, it's yeah. covered in rust and it's ugly. Everybody hates it, but I love it. It's so, got the character for you, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely like a patina rust rod ride, you know? But That's it's cool. getting this, like, little race engine. It's going to be a very fast 1972 pop-up bus. <laughs> Sleeper type. like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's going to be a weird, wild ride. So um, thanks, Minivan Mike. I see he said oh, rock. A lot of people tonight, I mean, a lot of new ones that found you and that. I mean, a lot of people are saying how much they like your content like you. So awesome. That's great. Uh, I actually have the 20R motor uh, in the Toyota. Someone mentioned it had the 22R, but I have the 20R. But um, so I also have a 1974 Volkswagen 412, which mm. is one of the strangest cars Volkswagen's ever made. It's known as their worst car ever. Um <laughs> Not it's not the worst because of mechanical issues or anything. It's just it was a horrible flop in sales. Right. Um, so I have one of those. It's 1974. Um, I have 1976 Dodge Titan uh, Class A RV. That is, I want to bring that back so bad. Um, it was it was a toss up between that camper and the bread truck that I'm in. Um, so I, don't, I I have a lot of different weird taste oh the car that i drive um when i'm not living in a van i haven't driven it in <laughs> almost a year now is a 1994 geo metro that's my main really? car yeah it's a geo metro xfi and Ooh. i've rebuilt that car from like the ground up it has everything new including a motor i have a friend that found a brand new old stock motor um so it's like a new car a new geo metro <laughs> it's awesome but. I got. I got to tell you something's going on that I haven't told anybody, and I, I'm. I'm not a sentimental person. I'm not a materialistic person, but my heart is kind of breaking tonight. The uh -oh. very first new vehicle I ever bought myself, and I bought it fully loaded because the only thing I ever wanted was leather seats. I bought a 2005 Mazda Tribute, mm -hmm. fully loaded. I was working for a big music company. I'd finally done all these things I wanted to do, and that was my pinnacle. I, I'm not that type of person. I'm, my dad was never like a big buyer. So even though I could have maybe afforded something like a couple of steps higher, I went with the practical, but yet yeah, had some comfort. 
And gotcha. after 13 years tomorrow, they're going to be towing it away. I'm getting rid of it. I don't want to sell it to anybody, so I've decided to give it to a, a place. And they're going to mm. be towing it away and scrapping it. And it's breaking my heart. <laughs> and I hate to admit it because I usually don't – I'm not materialistic. Right. This, you know, my <laughs> son, but, you know, I remember us when we first got to Canada back after Xenia and all that going into it. Like, it has so many things. It's been in every province in Canada at least once. It's yeah. been in the States. It's been everywhere. From coast to coast and back. I forget in miles, but it has 346,000 kilometers original on it. And I put every one of them on myself. Yeah. And it's eight first. and a half times around the world. You have to video it to Zoom. Yeah. Says. yeah. Has, has it been sitting for a long time? Yep. Uh, no, I've been driving it right up till I, uh, a, oh. cousin, a second cousin of mine passed away. He was 80, mm -hmm. and he ended up leaving me everything in his will. So now I got this truck and car, and I got this thing, and I can't keep them all going. And Yeah. You know? That's a bummer. Yeah. Susie. And I could have sold it. I, I'm getting rid of it. I'll get $400 for getting rid of it. And that's a place where people can pick parts, you know, at a lower price. They, they're one of those places you go and you pull the parts off yourself. Oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. It will help somebody else. And I didn't want somebody else driving it. I thought it's been this long. I'm only going to get an extra maybe 400 bucks if I'm lucky if I sold to somebody else and I have a ton of hassle and questions. Yeah. I have since the beginning, so I wanted to end with me. And I've yeah. never been this way before, ever, about anything like materialistic. <laughs> and my heart was well, breaking today when I made the call. Like, I just, yeah. like... I, I totally understand. I, I understand what you mean. Yeah. Uh, I, I try not to get that way about vehicles and stuff. A lot of people think I'm that way about my bread truck, but I'll be honest with you. If it's the right business decision, I would sell it tomorrow. And, right. And, um, but I, I do have those a little attachments to things. I, like my Metro, my Geo Metro. That's like, I, I don't know. I wouldn't want to get rid of that ever. I intend to tow it behind my rig eventually. It's yeah. perfect to tow. You know, so is a um, so is a Mazda Tribute actually. They're, those are good tow tow vehicles. <laughs> That's right, uh, Lodge. Yes, because he lives in Montreal too. It's going to Kenny Upol. Yes, you guessed where it was going. So. <laughs> I wasn't even going to talk about it until you mentioned about your Geo Metro. That's what made well, me. Well, Uzu is again saying you that you should make a video. About I yeah, uh, I should. I wish back then I didn't film everything. I wish I had of, but uh, it would have been. Well, nice. I still have time in the morning. I don't know. I actually have on myself. I have the video say to my camera when it hit three hundred thousand kilometers because Xenia and my daughter were with me, and I'm like driving down the street really slowly with my cell phone pointing at the autometer to catch it. So right. <laughs> yeah, I was holding the cell phone. He was driving just in case. Yeah, yeah. My goodness. Yeah. Your hand was on the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I uh, know there's lots of memories, of course, uh, Pedro, but some things, things sometimes just get too old. And I mean, I think this one, uh, unfortunately, has passed. The, it was the, the old, first new yeah. vehicle I ever got. It's where I really felt I was going somewhere yeah. in life, you know? Yeah. I, yeah. Worked, I went to school for uh, cop. I quit that, became a truck driver. Then I worked in forestry because I want to be closer when my first son was born. Then I developed an allergy to spruce of all things, even though I grew up with it my whole life. So then I went back to school, and that's when I studied computer design and that. So I got in with this music company, and we were the Canadian distributor of, like, Marshall amplifiers. Oh, yeah. We were Marshall Canada. So, like, when Slash and all them would come in, I would do signings with them at dealerships and then take people back. It was amazing. It was my dream because I used to be a musician. I was living, meeting, working with all these great people. So that mm -hmm. car kind of symbolized at the time everything finally coming into place, you know. And then I, love those I love those moments. It's called um, self-actualization. When mm -hmm. you feel like you've made it, you know, that, that oh. feeling that you're there, you know. Yeah. Well, well, uh, thank For you. Sure. <laughs> I'll remember that from you. Yeah, I, I think because um, I, I love to <clears throat> I, I like to make those those moments more like on smaller incremental things, you know what I'm saying? Like right. um, celebrate it like like you would that car, you know, um, but um, I, I, yeah, I definitely um, I love feeling those aha moments, you know, those um, and I've been having more and more of them. It's like the happier you, happier you can live in your life, you you get those more moments more. That's right, hundred percent. The more positive things get into your life, the more. And it's not that you have to be living in a rainbow dream. It's just doing things that feel good at the end of the day. 
And I agree with you, setting increments, that's that all ties into YouTube. Like some people, I see them setting goals that are so far ahead of themselves. It's good to dream, but then you need to make them realistic steps so you get yes. time to enjoy your accomplishments. So you don't get discouraged. Sometimes when it's set so mm -hmm. far and only one goal, you, you, you lose all that fun in between. Right. And, you know, I, I think change comes a little bit different than a lot of people expect it to look like, especially yeah. when you're not accustomed to it. Because I, with my YouTube channel, it seemed like I would have long periods of nothing happened. It was like stagnant and um, nothing happening, very slow, tiny little changes. But um, it seemed like overnight, all of a sudden, um, a lot of things happened. So I think kind of like that's the way either we perceive it or that's just the way it happens. But you'll see a large, you'll see moments of diligent work where you're just grinding, uh, you know, grinding away. And suddenly one day, lot a big change happens. And suddenly you feel, you get one of those moments where you're like, I've made it. I, mm -hmm. I accomplished something I set out to do or whatever your success is, you know? I agree with that a hundred percent. Yeah. And a lot of people get discouraged. I think that's where a lot of people get hung up is that yep. they'll try and they'll, they'll work hard for a long time. And then right before that change happens, they'll give up and then they lose all the, all that work that they did. You know? Yeah, those gaps between everything, you know, that's why it's so important to have those steps in there. It's good to have a long-term goal, but you need those steps in between because you need those celebrations to get you to the next one because you're right, there is going to be lulls. There's mm -hmm. no way around it. Everything in life has that. Well, the proper goal setting in general has to be in the smaller steps and it has to be measurable and time wise. Uh, you, you have to know the time, you know, when to hold yourself yeah. accountable uh, and, and things like that. You can't just have abstract uh, goal and all well, whenever it happens and it never happens. Uh, if yeah. you have a bigger goal, you do d divide it in smaller ones, you know, and set your timing as well. So so then you actually can climb up that yeah. ladder towards mm -hmm. bigger, the proper proper way of, of setting yeah. goals a successful way too timing is such a huge thing as well as yeah. you have the timing different and it's just it blows everything and um mm -hmm. I, I noticed that when i was getting ready to leave in the in the truck um i would talk about you know i'd be ready to go um you know next month or whatever and that just kept getting pushed out and it turned into six months of not leaving orlando and i'm like right. wow if i don't just leave i'm never going to be ready so I'm just going to pack up my truck and go because I was trying to sort out all these things, uh, get the mechanics right on the truck and start building things. And I didn't even get close to building anything. Um, I was lucky to get it running at all to get out of the, but I just left. I just, I had to, because um, otherwise it was just not going to, the timing just kept. So, so setting a goal would have been much better. If I said, I'm leaving by this date, because I, I didn't have any time frame. I was just like, I'll leave when I'm ready. Well, you're never ready. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 yeah yes. Vague. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was very vague. And I just kept stringing it along. And I like, I realized at one point, I was like, wow, it's been nearly six months. I got to get, I got to get going. It has to. So, yeah. And, and I think, and, and even sometimes it is the best way too, because it's kind of um, gets rid of that uh, anxieties that some people, yeah. I think, get. Uh, well, when we do get closer to the date, so for example, uh, uh, you know, so sometimes people get more anxious about getting stuff not done before it, and then they procrastinate even more and things like that. So for some people, even better works that, okay, let's do it and now, and, and like, don't think about anything. We, uh, we left Saskatchewan like that, uh, lived there yeah. for two years. Uh, and then just one day decided, oh, okay, let's let's move back to Montreal. Well, my son lived back here, my oldest <laughs> yeah. son, my first marriage, and I, he was visiting us, and I was just breaking my heart. And she's right, like we just decided on a Friday yeah. morning. We had a four month old and a four year old, and yeah, we just yeah. moved apartments, so we put like a you know a deposit mm -hmm. for the, and and all that, so well, everything was planned for staying and. And then it was like one day, uh, decided, rented, I think, the, the U-Haul the same day, yeah. uh, put just the, the very necessities in. Uh, his son went on the plane, and we, with a four-month-old, mm -hmm. left uh, on a car from Saskatchewan to Montreal. 3,500-kilometer yeah. drive. In three days, we were here. Uh -huh. You know, and, and, and like week before uh -huh. that, we planned to be in Montreal. So that's, that's how we tend to do sometimes things as well. And, and I think... 
uh, oftentimes it does work uh, for the best you know, because you don't have time yeah, to rethink for too sure. much, expect. Sometimes we expect too much and then we get jipped when it doesn't happen exactly how we were planning, you know. For, mm -hmm. When you do it like this, you don't really have time for that and therefore you are, get less disappointed, I find. Absolutely. And some people get caught up in that and then they never make that jump or they never, yes. they never you know, it, it turns into, you know, oh, and then, you know, my son broke his leg. And that yes. costs a thousand dollars or things happen, you know? So sometimes the timing of things is better to just go than to think it too much through. Um, I, I agree with you. Yeah. I agree hundred percent on that one. Can I show you guys like the video I'm most proud of? Sure. Uh, so I just, link? I just posted the link there. Um, oh. We're not, we're not listening to the, vi to the audio. Oh. So I just thought I'd fast forward it to the part about, what this is the real catalyst, the real story behind why I actually changed my uh, career and my jump uh, into the van life. So, um, bear with me for one second. I forgot to put open a new tab this time, and I closed my chat on me. So, I'll just be one second, and I'll. Okay. Right back. Um, I'll I'll just tell you a little bit about the video while while you're. Sure, thank you. It. But um, the. Uh, uh, my dog, I, I got this dog around the same time that I changed my life the first time and got healthy and all this stuff. Um, I had gotten a new dog and it was my first dog that was all mine. Um, I got a Bernese mountain dog, a, a dog I'd always dreamed about getting forever. And that was like my best buddy. Um, and it was nearly, you know, he was almost 10 years old and uh, they don't have notoriously long life, life, um, life expectancies and he died just before 10 which is actually kind of good sometimes they they die younger but um that was really the major thing that like made me just say screw it and change it all and uh go ahead and do the do the change so oh that's a, that's too far into the video sorry about that back oh. it up to i believe um let me see I don't know why it went so far ahead. It, it's back at... Oh, it's a long video. No, that is right. It okay. is? Yeah, no, that's right. So, um, I when I left on my trip with... Uh, I left with my dog's ashes. And, um, oh no, that's not right. Oh wait, maybe I'm just looking... Yeah, what... It should be at around nine minutes. That looks like it's toward the end. Around nine minutes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it should be starting around. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, so um, when I left from Orlando, I brought my dog's uh, ashes with me, and I, I wanted to say goodbye to him in a really special, epic way and do, a, uh, do something special for him. So I drove to this place in... Um, it's called Hanging Lake in Colorado, and it was just a super Beautiful. gorgeous spot that um, that I found. Um, really hard hike to get to, um, at least for a guy that's kind of out of shape. But um, definitely worth the trek, though. Yeah, and then right here, there's a, there's a nice little like slideshow uh, of my dog that I do to music and this this cute this beautiful area as like the backdrop for it. But um, it was just the perfect place to say goodbye to my best buddy, you know. Aww. Beautiful. Beautiful. We love Burmese. My sister has a Burmese. I love these dogs. Oh. Aww. Aww. They are such great souls. I mean, mm -hmm. oh, my goodness. That's beautiful. That was the first day I got them right there. Oh. Um. But, uh, yeah. What a beautiful little pop. Oh, my God. Uh, I, oh, I love that. My best kind friend. of like a symbolic thing about the, the water going backwards, kind of. Yes. Um, hmm. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, people in chat saying, too, a special story and... Oh, the video broke uh, my heart. Mechanic Steve is saying, 
Mm -hmm. Best video from Dale Betts. Sorry for your loss. Yeah. Oh my God, look at Zinni. He's up on the fence. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, oh. Yeah, it's just, uh, that's, Sorry so for that's definitely that was definitely like the, that's the thing that made me change it all. So hmm. I know it's not easy. I uh, I I don't. I, they become so close to you. I think so in in ways they sometimes become even closer than yes. family members. Yeah, because you know uh, I tend to talk to them uh, more things than sometimes you would. Yeah, uh, with with humans, you know. Um, you get angry, you know they're still gonna be there at the end of the day. They're still, oh, oh. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah, that's that's the size of his paw, man. He was a big boy. Wow. There's another video back, uh, way way back uh, in 2010, yeah. I think, uh, of my dog playing with a um a, a Great Dane, and uh, yeah. they're like equal sized. <laughs> it's it's awesome. Great Danes are huge, and yes, yeah. but Burmese they always will have that pup in them. You know, even no matter how much they weigh or how big they get, they'll always have it. Yeah, right. Um, so they uh, so one of my goals in the future is once I I get to a point where I have a homestead, um, I'd like to like find a, a rescue, or you know something like that. Um, Good for you. So yeah, maybe a couple of them, maybe four or five of them. <laughs> one person told me one time that you know they call it a rescue for the dogs, but sometimes it's more of a rescue for the the one the owner that's finding mm -hmm. the pup there. Right. You know? I, it's. Uh, and thank you for so much, so many nice comments, you guys. I appreciate that. I um. You're breaking my heart. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring you guys down. No. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> Never say that. No. No. Um, it, you know, I, I don't mind being vulnerable and, yes. um, a lot of times, you know, guys are afraid to show a tear or mm -hmm. get upset or whatever, but, uh, you, I don't, I don't have an issue with that. So <laughs> I, 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 that's why people gravitate to what you do. You'll yeah. see him at the rainbow bridge, Paul, heavy metal magnet says, uh, right? Uh, I think about that all the time, <laughs> but, yeah. um, the rest of the video is just kind of like the hike and stuff. So I just wanted to, I thought that um, the uh, slideshow is, is really, really special about that video. And um, that was really yeah. nice. See, Xenia watched it today. We break them up. So we each watch different ones. And she's better than I am. And yeah. she gets always more than I do. Yeah, no, I noticed yeah. the dog before that. And um, I'm posting some videos to here when where the dog is. Uh, I, uh, yeah, because I, yeah. I noticed that it's the same dog that Jody has. Yes. So, uh, My sister got hers from a rescue. And yeah. Yeah. Be, and the key well, is, yeah. Oh, sorry, With, go ahead. Uh, I, I hate to be a snob about breeds, too. Some people will look down on this, but I want to rescue another Bernie's Mountain Dogs, but they've gained so much popularity recently Yes, that I, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Uh, I, I, I just ran into a guy at Portland. If you look at my Portland YouTuber meetup video, there's a guy that had one. And uh, it, the guy, you know, the dog's in, in – um, he's very happy, you know, but he, his hip, hips are so bad he has trouble walking and stuff. So this guy – Rescued yeah. him and uh, you know, uh, seemed like an awesome dog. I loved him, but um, that's what's happening yeah. with my sisters right now, of course, because they're so prone to it. Is that with the, the hips? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, got... my dog had a great he, he had yeah. such good health that I didn't have to worry about that stuff with him, so that was excellent. But uh, there's a this is her dog here that she got. The, Except now he's about three times the size. Oh my! Yeah. He looks like a brown bear. Like yeah. when uh, Andrew was walking yeah. in there, uh, looks like a brown bear. Right. Yeah, I'd say uh, it looks like a Swiss mountain dog. Is he a short-haired uh, one? Oh yeah, but yeah. he usually is not. They just they, he was oh, just they cut him. Trimmed. just trimmed. Yeah. Yeah, oh, cool. he, yeah. Because in the summer, like they're dying from heat. Basically. I have to tell you this one quick story. He kind of put on a little bit of weight, and she came back. He, her husband came back with him from the groomers at Christmas, 
And she, they usually put a bandana on them. And this, it was a yellow one. And she said, well, that's kind of weird. You know, it's Christmas. Funny they didn't put red or green. He said, well, they tried for about 20 minutes, and they couldn't get nothing that would fit them. So the poor thing come home. He's 173 pounds, so they had to pull oh, him on the Wow, he's huge. But he Mine? still thinks he's a pup. You know, they think yeah. they're like 10 pounds. It's like nobody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's Yeah, that's a big boy. Mine, uh, he only weighed about 105 pounds, but he looked like 140 or something. He looked huge. Um, oh, yeah. But... Uh, yeah, they're they're awesome. They're awesome dogs. I, I love the I love the I love the tribute. I think that is so nice what you did. You know, I I really love that video. So much heart into it. Um, I don't know what to follow it up with after watching it. To be honest. <laughs> well, you know? um, this is a you my most popular video. There's one that's got over eighty thousand views now. It's funny because my channel is not based on anything viral. Nothing's gone viral to get me all these subscribers or anything like that. Um, it's just kind of like a slow, consistent uh, content that I continue to upload, you know, that's, a, that's of good quality, I think. Yeah, and, but, um, but I do have one video that is kind of going viral, a mini viral, I call it. Like um, my Slab City video is, um, so that's kind of like, I've gotten a lot of heat. Most hate on my page has been over Slab City. Uh, it's kind of uh, are you guys familiar with Slab City? Uh, yeah, yeah, I watched a couple yeah. of those videos too you, because you have a couple of them, and I, I was impressed with uh, over 80,000 yeah. views on it. Uh, that was quite impressive. Yeah, that's definitely my biggest, that's my biggest video that I have. What do you think was uh, that caught, yeah. uh, like, because you do have other videos too about it? Uh, what, why exactly that, that one? one? I, I think the title, I just I just made that title just right. And maybe the thumbnail looks really, I think the thumbnail is kind of impressive with that big wall of TVs. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because it's an image that other people have used, but um, just the title combination with the, um, with the thumbnail, I think, is what makes it. And it also came at the same time where I started satisfying this YouTube algorithm yeah, and they started promoting out. my video. So timing was a big thing. Yeah. Um, I would not have any views on that video if YouTube hadn't recommended that in, in other related Slab City videos. Right. So I, I, I saw that from the analytics. It shows where the traffic comes from. So yeah. That's a big point we're always pushing with people is, is that like your analytics is your Bible. And I see that you do take a lot of time and pay attention to your analytics. Is that something I do you just some, yeah. Story? Is it just recent for you to really get in analytics, or is it something you've been kind of like playing with for a while now? No, I've been I've been watching this from the day from the beginning because when I started, Adpocalypse had already happened. Yeah. Um, so I already knew that there was it was a new world. So um, once I started looking at uploading consistently, I started looking at what it takes to be successful, and there's all this talk of the algorithm, and mm -hmm. um, I think it's. Uh, kind of a crappy thing to have to guess at what this algorithm wants. I wish we had more clear standards, but yeah. um, the uh, you can definitely you have to put a lot of work in before the algorithm likes you. <laughs> you know, so and it, like it, it I, I'm not a tinfoil hat kind of guy, so nobody think that I'm going all over the place. But AI, I don't think it's going to rule the world or anything like that right now with Google. I don't mean that way. I don't think it's like left the farm, but it does get out of the pen now and then. And the engineers kind of, kind of, they're not even quite sure themselves. Little new habits it's picked up, and then they got to play like two weeks of catch up sometimes to figure out what what it's going for. Mm -hmm. They're not even really sure themselves all the time. Yeah, you know, right. And I, I think it is a changing thing too. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it, since the beginning, I've been kind of probing, seeing what I can get away with, um, you know, seeing if you can curse or see if you can show a police car. Apparently that you you kind of can't <laughs> like they'll take away your monitor. It took away monetization on the video because it was about a cop that talked to me. Really? There was nothing aggressive, nothing in any way. I've seen that video. Yeah, there's not really. I mean, it's a, uh, I didn't realize you right down to a cop would get you a. Uh lose your monetization on a video well 
I just got it. Well, there was one that I was in Santa Clara and a police officer stopped me and a cop. I didn't show him on video or anything, yes. but I talked about it. And um, that video was demonetized. And I just checked yesterday that it actually came back. So oh, um, they did. Yeah, they did overturn that one. Um, but the Slab City video, all I showed was a uh, there was a fire in Slab City, like there often is. Yeah. And um, there's firefighters putting it out. So that one's been de- demonetized and that has several thousand views. Wow. Um, but it, it doesn't show any loss of life. There's no, no one yeah. was in danger. Nobody was harmed. It just shows firefighters putting out a fire. But I don't know. You know, it's. Uh, That's the hard it's, part with AI because it's all balanced on numbers and statistics and no real judgment. That's yeah. the thing that they can't replicate right now, and that's where YouTubers do pay the price sometimes, unfortunately. Yeah, for sure. Look at the, Phil uh, Franco. You know what he's going through? A guy with multi-million viewers. Just because he covers the news, almost all of his videos get demonetized for it. Yeah, that's which so is crazy. so ridiculous. I mean, how you're supposed to uh, you know, report the news without mentioning it. And he's not even actually showing any graphic well, content, per se. And it even right. stops people from doing anything more in-depth. You know, that's when people say, oh, I hate all the Jake Paul. Now. Unfortunately, they're the ones who get the most coverage because they don't cover anything serious. Yeah. You know, it's a weird, it's a weird mix going on right now. It's like the Wild West all over again. It, it is it's difficult to figure out because um you, you know you just don't know what to do in the mm-hmm. um it, it does kind of hinder you from doing what you really want to do you know i mean youtube's a little different now and i don't have the freedom to <coughs> really cut loose and be the way i want to be 100 percent. but that's okay I'll, i can play nice and you know watch my videos. like the other night when we got uh our um that copyright strike for our promo video. I mean, it's something we've done since almost the beginning. And it's just because somebody decided to flag us, all of a sudden we could have been out for 90 days. And there's two parts of a uh, problem with that. A, it just shows you how quick somebody can rip everything away from you. And thank God we're not earning a living with this right now or we'd be screwed. And B, they punish you by taking away live streams for 90 days because it's looked at as a, a fringe thing. But now live streams are becoming so popular on YouTube. There's channels starting to use that as a like their steady format. Yeah, <clears throat> you know what I mean. Like so, it, it's a two part thing that could have happened out of all that. For sure. No, there's people that that's all they do is the live streams. Is I mean, yeah, there's a guy who's not not doesn't have a lot of fans, but his name's Burger Planet. Um, he, or. He has a lot of fans. He doesn't have a lot of people who like him, I should say. Right. <laughs> but uh, that's that's he live streams like every day, and that, that's the future. That's where things are going. Yeah. Whether you like live streams or not, I'm mm-hmm. setting my truck up. Actually, I have this concept I want to try. Um, I don't think cell phone data speeds are there yet, but okay. I want. I'm setting up a eight camera security system in my van um, to film everything. I want to film the front of my truck, the rear of my truck, left side, right side, uh, driver's side rear view mirror and passenger side rear view mirror, all on cameras. Um, and then even inside the cabin up front and in the rear. Um, wow. So eight wow. cameras at all times. And if I can get it set up to the point where I'm live streaming 24 seven, I may, I, I might do that. Um, I got your I'm own really get it set up to do. <laughs> You kind of have your own reality show. Yeah, that's great. Be- like it'd be like Big Brother, sort of, yeah. but just with yeah. my own lies. Um, so I'm kind of I'm gonna set my truck up for that for security first of all, and if I can use footage from it to put on my YouTube channel, I'll do that as well. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm setting it up for security though first, um, just so I can. I love how you just do this. I love it. It just always thinking of how to incorporate everything you're doing and and keep it fresh on YouTube as well as keeping it fresh in your life. It's a win-win-win all the time with you like that. I think it's so cool. Smart. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, I had I did a live stream one night. It was getting super late, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. And I was like, okay, guys, I got to end this live stream. I'm going to bed. And people were like, no, no, don't end it. Don't end it. Just go to sleep. I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, just leave your camera on and go to sleep. So there's actually live streams where I sleep for like four, seven hours and I oh. wake up and I'm still live streaming 17 hours later. I'm still live streaming the next day. 
And uh, there's a couple of them out there like that. I'm like, why would people even want to do that? But I don't know. <laughs> ASMR is a popular thing as well. I don't understand yeah. that. So you might be um, falling into that as well. There's another win for you. I have a friend, uh, Nelson, actually, that I'm staying with. He's telling me I should do ASMR. I should do a. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm I'm very straight. I'm a very straight man, but he's joking, like busting my chops, saying I should do like a gay bear cuddle <laughs> ASMR video. And I'm thinking, like that would probably actually would be successful. Um, yeah, but <laughs> I mean, I can't imagine there's too many bear gay guys that have an ASMR outlet, you know, to go to. That's but <laughs> I think it's funny. Definitely take it outside the box. I give you. This definitely box. outside the box. That's way outside the box. <laughs> yeah, that's that's in the next box over. <laughs> See, I, I, I don't know what my shtick is. A lot of people have a shtick. You know, you have some people have that thing that brings people to them. So, um, I don't think I've even found what mine is. You know, some people have millions of followers for playing a video game. Um, you know, uh, so other people have millions of followers from whispering or caressing yeah. a microphone or I you think know a lot of people just like andrew was saying uh, although you do have a very unique niche what you're doing but i think and, and maybe i'm wrong but i think most of the people that come to your channel love listening to you talk yeah. about life mm -hmm. they and, like and, your life yeah, yeah. Uh, like, like the, the whole like concept and philosophy about it and like then the practical side to it's just like the it's very um and I don't know, like you, you compared yourself to still a child mm -hmm. <laughs> at the beginning, uh, but I think yeah. that's the part that attracts to it because it's very, uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's very, uh, it feels good to listen to you. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, yeah. it, it feels good to be listening to you. There's a lot of people sitting about. at their desk and then they're watching yeah. you and they're living vicariously because you're doing what they wish they were doing. Right. And you know, that's something that I've actually had a, kind of a hard time wrapping my head around, but it, it's becoming clearer and clearer when I look at demographics and uh, or the um, analytics. I mean, um, that people are at my channel to watch me. And it's like, it's kind of weird. I'm like, oh, people really want to yeah. see me because I've done videos that are that don't that don't feature me and stuff like that. And I don't feel like they get the response that they yeah. do when I'm in it. And I'm like, wow, it's kind of like. It's becoming yeah. clearer and clearer. I think that that's what my, the draw of my channel is, is me. I'm like, oh, yeah. it's pretty cool. <laughs> so, I, I get that. Yeah. It, uh, we kind of went through that because we did cinematics. We never went in front of a camera. We only went in front. We always swore we never, we never even watched live streams to be yeah. perfectly transparent about the whole thing. I never really understood the point to them. And then when we hit a thousand, we decided to do it kind of as a thank you, because people kind of wondered who we were. And now we do this, and it's become our mainstay. So it's okay to change. And I go through the same thing too. We were doing that first. We used to joke that every time we did a live stream, we'd hold hands before it started. We looked like the scene from Armageddon, you know, like pushing the. Big <laughs> Is this gonna all blow up in our face? Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, it's grown into something, and it's okay to reinvent. And we we had a hard time saying it was okay for us to do this. That was the hardest part. Because we kind of got like, you know, oh, they're the cinematic guys, but a lot of the editing, you know, they're kind of... So I thought people would kind of see us as sellouts and stuff, but we really did when we reinvented ourselves. The one thing is we said we'll keep the same integrity. We put our cinematics, we'll keep it to this. Yeah. So that's why we started bringing other people on and trying to do this. We don't try to pretend that it's some late night talk show with a big set. Nothing looks goofier than like a back screen that looks like BBC behind us. You right. know what I mean? We are a broadcasting yeah. studio from Montreal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. CBC. Wait, I gotta ask my editor about this. You know, we don't do that kind of <laughs> stuff. But we right. also try not to be hokey and sit around the couch and I wish you'd make me something to eat. You know, we you know, like, like Janice mm -hmm. uh, Lala it was saying um, before, and I, I told her it's the best compliment ever. She said it's like listening to two people talking in a room. And, and that's exactly what we are shooting for. Yeah. It couldn't be better, uh, you know, said the compliment. It's not more yeah. than that, but yeah. we love what it is, you know. Yeah, people get to see you and watch more. <laughs> yeah, and I, I get the similar I get similar uh, feedback on my live streams. Mm -hmm. It's like I feel like I'm there with you, hanging out or, you know. You do. And, uh, 
I love it. It's, it's funny. Now the future community is different. You know, we're part of the same community. Um, yes. I'm, you are thousands of miles away. But mm-hmm. in, just because our community takes place on a digital platform doesn't lessen it at Not all. It. Um, it's just I can't physically reach out and touch you guys. But that's the only thing. Our, my community is spread international. Um, it, it's, it's amazing how things are now. Um, there's, there's these YouTubers that I follow on, um, uh, I just follow their channel and, um, they said that one, a long time ago and it was like one of those moments I was like, holy shit, like I feel connected to them, you know, even though it's through a video that I watched or whatever, but. Sometimes more because it forces you to, like Xenia and I, we met and I mean, we first started just talking like, you know, through MSN and then through Skype, we had a seven hour time difference. Right. I've never gotten to meet somebody that much in my entire life because it for, literally just forced me to talk. So, right. I, so, I, I, so you guys know exactly how it is. I mean, the, yeah. the format that you guys met in is completely new. Um, you know, so yeah, it's a, it's a different ballgame. Yeah. I tried, I've tried Second Life. Is that what it was, Second Life? And I just, I never, um, I didn't spend that much time in it. So, uh I wish I had, uh, I didn't really understand how to control it all that much, but. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, is that his home? I don't know. No, I'm just putting it out. Sorry. I'm just dealing here with chat. Uh... Uh, this, uh, my, this is my buddy, a tribe called Cookies is um, okay. someone I've actually met in real life. Um, oh, okay. I was stuck in Vegas. Uh, he's friends with the Dilbert Grady guy that was here. Um, oh, okay. But, um. Oh, all my people here. Kelly K. They come from this bottom of YouTube group. I don't know if you're familiar with the bottom of YouTube, but no, no. That's a whole other story. Um, <laughs> but Tribe Called Cookies, I, he's an awesome dude. I met him in real life. He actually found my position from my live streams and rolled up on me in the parking lot of the Rio Resort and Casino in oh Vegas. My, God. <laughs> my truck was broke down. I couldn't run away. And this strange person rolled up on me out of nowhere. Uh, he said he was coming, but I didn't know when or whatever. And I was like, all right, come on, come on and come. And this guy rolled up on me. Um, but cool. he was awesome. I mean, the guy uh, knew a mechanic. He has a shop in town. My oh. truck was broke down. That's why I was stuck there. And he did a couple of repairs on my truck and got me on my, uh, he circled the wagons. Yeah. <laughs> he posted a video creeping up on me. But um, it's weird how things happen on YouTube, man. It, it's just uh, I would have never expected to gotten help and make a new friend from um, some people call them trolls. I don't like to call them trolls. They're my friends, but <laughs> um, no. I have, you know, he's a good guy. He's a really good guy. So, and I, and I apologize to try and call cookies. I just wanted to make sure because sometimes we're looking at the side and you see long names, anything said, it's just natural. So welcome. So it's really good to have you here. So. Yeah, he helped me out big time, man. That's my homie. <laughs> See, we are <laughs> trolls. I know you're not trolls. <laughs> Delbert is his cousin, yeah. Uh, oh, I brought Tribe and Kelly here. The, Pusa doesn't like me. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they get a little out of hand. They get a little rowdy, but... <laughs> no, I, we don't, we I put him on a timeout twice. That's why I'm warned beforehand, oh, yeah. and I very rarely do that. So I know, uh, I know. <laughs> sometimes, yeah. It, sometimes I I don't like to time out people. I usually just delete comments, but sometimes you can only delete so fast, and you're like, okay. But <laughs> when you have 200 fake accounts, when someone times you out, you just come back with a different fake account. So that's kind of <laughs> yeah. Trust me, I've been through this all on <laughs> on the live streams. We have we've had quite a lot of fun. What's up, oh. salty nomad? <laughs> Yeah, I got a lot of people. These are like a lot of the people that hang out in my live streams all the time. Oh, she's sorry. I like the troll movie. Yeah, I like the troll movie too. <laughs> okay. uh, we don't have anything. We actually, we had Jim Apple that uh, came in yeah. as a troll and then <laughs> became one of our better followers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, I have people do that. They'll come to my channel. I'll have a live stream. <laughs> and they'll be like, I just saw you and recommended. I came here to troll you, but. I'm actually, I subscribed. I like your videos and stuff. Like, <laughs> exactly. I, you know what I'm saying? It's like, that happens a lot. It's happened quite a few times. Well, since the right. 90s, like the days of MIRC, there was always the thing with moderators. 
they're great sometimes. And then there's other channels where they get on these power trips. Like, it's so ridiculous. You know, like, they're ready to ban the big warnings. It's like, if you ever walk in their house, they probably hide under a desk. So I always been under the theory, if you make most, basically, everybody monitors, if you, somebody comes in being an ass, they get tired and leave. You know, it's more like set by just ignore them and be good, and they'll either fit in or they'll get fed up again and take off. Yeah. Because yeah. some channels, you know, it's like, well, I'm warning you, if you do it again, we're going to, like, the thunder of God. And it's like, you're probably 16 and weigh 40 pounds off your winter house. So don't, right? Yeah. That's the time to be tough because they're not doing it in the real life, you know? So. <laughs> See, Delbert Grady came to troll my friend, but fell in love with my bread truck. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. You said that they are your bread rolls. Yeah, that's my bread rolls. You gotta love them. All I imagine is this little trolls, like it is in a movie, just rolling. Oh my god, oh my. that doesn't help. <laughs> I just thought it's so cute. It well, so the, cute. My bread rolls have a bunch of uh, funny names for the for the trolls. They call them like yeast infection, or <laughs> uh, they call them. Uh, uh, Oh, what was the uh, or bread trolls? I guess. Um, oh, really? Uh, a couple little funny things. So, yeah, it, that's part of the community. I mean, that's what it is. You're yeah. all having fun together and connecting well, together. That's true. I mean, all all comments are positive in the algorithm. All watch time is positive in you know the analytics. So, yep. if they're watching for any reason, really, what's the, who cares what the reason is? You know, if they're watching, you know. Well, last night we had a shout out to celebrate uh, getting back on after what happened. And, you know, we said that for one person that tried to screw us, we ended up having the best night of our life. Yeah. The most we've ever had in the channel, the most watch hours, the most positive time. You know, so that's the best way to get back at somebody who tries to screw you is to show that you're even better for it. And, more, yeah. you know, it, yep. that's Absolutely. worse salt on their wound than anything else you could never do to them. Mm -hmm. I did. Oh, you did already? Bad luck, Brian. Okay. Welcome, by the way. Welcome to all of you. It's good to have you guys all here. Yeah, what's up, guys? <laughs> we got 32 people, 33 people watching. That's pretty awesome. Delbert uh, Grady, who screwed the Pusha. Yeah, we put up a promo video and somebody tried to uh, screw it up for us. They marked us as spam and got our channel. We wouldn't be able to hold a live stream. And we finally got through everybody band together and hit uh, YouTube's Twitter and droves, which we truly appreciate. And we're back. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this is what, uh, you know, I was talking on Twitter today about, too. You know, uh, I think sometimes the smaller uh, YouTubers, and, and I mean, we are smaller. We don't have millions, right? Uh, right. We, we kind of think, well, what, what are we really doing? Like, you know, how much there's actually people watching what we're doing. But then when something like this happened and all community, no matter you know, who do, do they belong to, what group, or what are they standing for? Nothing. Just people from all across different channels stood up for us, you know, in, in basically in 24-hour in time, starting retweeting, you know, uh, tweeting to YouTube, commenting, putting their pleas out, videos. Like, uh, it just was so heartwarming to watch. And yep. some people that never even you know heard of us they were coming to check us and then writing yeah. to youtube as well and it just proved that we are you know it it, it does count we're under it, one umbrella exactly it doesn't yeah. matter if you have hundred or thousands uh you know subscribers we're still at the same level so to say and it's amazing that anybody like you know all of all of the the, the people just stood up for us you yeah. know that's the power of the community of smaller youtubers and yeah. uh, just uh, kind of gave back the uh the positive attitude at least for me you know of what youtube is because oftentimes i think we think about it as a bigger um business that only pays attention to the you know millions um creators that have millions of uh, subs you know but right. but make not he, so much like that, you know. I, I just, I was, uh, we were very touched and, and yeah. heartwarmed that it actually worked. <laughs> and so many people came together for it, you know. Yeah. And the the nice thing is the, um, it, it, it's, if you have a smaller audience, you have the opportunity to be a little more intimate, you know. Yes. Um, if you have 50,000 subscribers and you go on a live stream, those comments are flying by like so fast. <laughs> 
yeah, it's 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 hard to be more personal with people. So that's the upside to being smaller too, you know. I, sure, I, I tell I, I people that, that yeah. you know, this is like, God forbid we ever get big because this is the golden time to be on YouTube. You'll never have as much fun on YouTube as we're having right now. You'll have to create a new channel that has no followers so you can do right. it over again. That's what you'll have That's to do. That's right. Yeah. You have your secret group that you come in under assumed name, you know. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. I agree with you on that 100%. And yeah. Some of your followers tonight, if you get a chance, I don't even know if you've seen this. I can't play the music because of... I will, it's not copyright, but then we won't be able to monetize. We redid the Cheers uh, theme. And uh, if you get a chance, check it out after. We did it as a collaboration. We redid all the Cheers, but doing all of our, our uh, podcasts together. Nice. We took some of our most memorable moments. We researched all the fonts, and we had two artists, Doodles by Doug, who was here a while ago, and our yeah, tarot, and our tarot Studios. He did the, I did the logo, but he did this picture with us. Yeah, awesome. And put us into it, and then we brought in the Cheers logo, and we, yeah, nice. Okay, yeah, I saw that. I saw that font earlier. I didn't realize what I was looking at, but yeah, yeah. That's, that's killer. Yeah, it was fun. It was, and then we just did different scenes from it, and just something to say. You thank. Go where everyone knows you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and this was Doodles by Doug, and he did a pitch one night. We were joking, and we uh, closed the show. Oh, Doodles is still in the chat. Oh, Doodles by the still way. here. Okay. Yeah. And um, Xenia put up this pillow because she was talking, and I said, oh, you're talking too much. So she said, fine, I'm going to put the, the pillow with a scarf and hat around it so it wouldn't talk as much as she did. So mm -hmm. I grabbed my daughter's five-foot monkey and put it in my plate so we closed the show. So he did a doodle of us, but putting our features into the monkey and pillow. So that's us awesome. there and our followers. Great so. job, doodles. That's that's really cool. Uh, uh, yeah, that's pretty that's – pretty... When you, I love it when you can like start upgrading and like bringing in other yes. mediums, you know, like that's that's cool. You got like another layer of complexity, you know. That's I was cool. so touched by it, the work they put into it, and they're like, "Oh, I don't want to let you down." It's like, "Good God, you got talent up the wazoo!" <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you yeah. make of, you know. I have a follower on my channel. He's in UK, so it's it, he said it was one a.m. by the time we would have started, but oh. um, he uh, he just he he sketches up um floor plans for my truck and stuff for me and like oh. kind of helps me like flesh out uh, um you know stuff like that he did the same thing with seven's uh channel but uh or his, his uh truck or whatever but yeah the it's it's really cool to have those kind of the viewers are great they are the subscribers oh. are great you know Oh, yeah, exactly. And it's all across the board. Like today uh, a girl uh she was uh, here earlier um uh, from japan asked what the blue range group is all about yeah and then came in to check the the the, the chat you know in our live stream stay there for a while and then i have to go to okay. work i'm in japan <laughs> you know yeah, and, yeah. and then we had uh, guests from new zealand uh, and i always have that old joke that they're back to the future <laughs> they come here for their lunchtime the husband part of the channel uh, at their lunchtime on the day after hours right they are always in our chat as well and they mm -hmm. were and stuff it's just amazing and and i think that's the part that is so so amazing about having youtube channel or, or being a youtube in general is is, is finding a like thinking minds all across the globe because really at the end it doesn't matter where we are from we still connect with the people that are the chair in the same kind of uh, thinking and, and values no, no matter which country they are from mm -hmm. and that's kind of what i put out there into the world as well is that i want to connect with like-minded people mm -hmm. so this forum that we're on definitely enables that you know or uh, yeah <laughs> delbert asked that push a guy has a tattoo of a bread truck on his bicep <laughs> <laughs> you might not yet but we'll that will be soon we'll, we'll work that's on right. that. that's my next one that's when i hit 2k <laughs> I'll, I'll put the <laughs> i'll put her in the bread truck there you go <laughs> mm -hmm. My tattoo days are over. I have enough of them. I don't even want the ones I got. I got Jim Morrison on my forearm, and <laughs> yeah, oh, here. I have no, I have no tattoos. That's a fun fact about me. I have zero. Now, would that be something you consider now that you're doing all these life changes? I don't think so. I don't know. I just can't think of anything that I would want to. I, I mean, I would love to have, I think it would look cool to have like a full sleeve and stuff. And I don't think I'm ready to, to go that far. Yeah, it's a, so a big one for I them. think just like one little tattoo is kind of, I think it's too late. Yeah. I, I don't, uh, 
not that it's too late. You can start anytime you want with anything. But for me, I just, I, I don't know. I think I'm going to stay without any tattoos. The Kenick Steve was talking about the doors. Yeah, there. Oh, yeah. There we go. Nice. That was a long time ago and a lot of drugs. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of like a warning to the doors yesterday. Yeah, funny part is when I had shorter hair, like even last year, people were asking if it's me. So I don't know if it's a compliment or not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's my first one here. This is I used to be a drummer, and that's from a Tama magazine in the eighties. I always kept the picture. Oh yeah, it looks and then it's I, like a dream catcher with a skull in it. Yeah, kind of skull with some, yeah. Like, yeah, kind of a Guns and Roses type of. That's I think they were trying to rip them off at the time. Yeah, <laughs> and I got that and drank for a couple of days, and then I got this one three days later. The chick on my arm. Ah, I pull up my sleeve on. <laughs> It's yeah. hard to, yeah. These yeah. are YouTube troubles. Yeah, exactly. Oh, now you're going to get demonetized. That's vulgar. Yeah, that's right. Taste. I, I pushed it too far this time. <laughs> <laughs> that's my next there tattoo. Get the sweater. <laughs> Make it real <laughs> clear. <laughs> Sorry, I cut you off. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's been so much fun talking with you tonight. I, I, Like I say, I like interesting people, and you definitely are at the top of the list in that area. Oh, uh, thank you. you. <laughs> And, and it is like you're varied in your channel. I really believe you are the lifestyle channel. You're like Jerry Seinfeld about the show about nothing. There's a show about everything. And that's kind of what I find your channel is. It's yeah. more lifestyle than the van. The van is a part of it, but it's not the focal point. Focal yeah. point in your life. I kind of look at it as like a character in my show, yes. but it's just a Very character much. that can, um, you know, uh, the bread. if it wasn't the bread truck, it would be the 72 bus or the, yeah, yeah. Or the whatever else. But, you know. A Herbie the Love Bug type of thing, like going on. Yeah, I love Love Bugs. Or uh, I love. I have a dream car of mine is a '65 Beetle. I used to have one. I want to get another one. So. Well, uh, if the dreams are going as well as they've been going so far, we'll probably see you with one in the not too far future. I hope so. I I uh, I need land, so I'll, I'll, I'm not going to be getting anything extravagant. I'll be getting land first, and then uh, maybe a Beetle to re restore or something like that. And are you looking while you're doing all this? Are you looking for maybe a Mrs. Bread truck along the way that somebody would want to share the stream with you? Or yeah, I that's one thing you know. Like I talked about how I manifested these relationships that I didn't even realize. Like meeting these YouTubers and stuff is that um, I'm building the truck so it's comfortable comfortable for two people. I don't have a second person yet, but um, I hope I you know find her and. Who knows where that goes? Um, but I'm definitely building a, a home that's comfortable for two. And um, that's kind of the idea. Yeah. I, I, but I did want to start on my own. There's a lot of things yeah. that I want to work on about myself and, and change. And I think that would I would have slower progress if I had um, somebody else. I don't know, though. I mean, I'm open. I think you can't possibly work on both things at the same time in the same quality like you know starting a relationship yeah. it's different if you already have it and then you both kind of start the journey but yeah. just start starting the journey that you were starting on and then starting a relationship at the same time i think it's uh like, i agree with that one yeah, much yeah. Kind of i think if you find the right person then you could it could potentially skyrocket my progress yeah, sure. I, don't, exactly. I don't know yeah i um i don't know i did definitely did want to leave on my own so uh I like it. Now, yeah. what would any any qualities, anything, anything that you can say here tonight in case she's listening or sees this video down the road, what would she be like? Um <laughs> it's funny because my, my ex girlfriend actually is on my live streams all the time. Oh really? And, yeah. I haven't seen her here at all, but um yeah, we're we're still good friends and stuff and I care for her uh quite a lot. Uh she's a she's an excellent person and um so a lot of her qualities are the same i think like we were great together if we could have come to a different understanding or something somehow things got off and i don't know they they just didn't seem to be repairable i don't know what happened but um, oh, wow. she's uh very uh she's very strong outspoken person she's got a strong character so 
I think similar to myself. Um, it's funny. She was actually also a uh, deli manager <laughs> at really? the same company. That's how we met was in our job. So our careers progressed exactly the same. So um, I'm not going to say her name or anything because, you know. Well, Dilbert little... here says his ex-girlfriend broke up with him because he had a big, silly beard. Yeah, no, that's not true. I, I was not allowed to grow a beard when I was at the grocery store. And uh, we split up. I, I stayed with that company for years after we had split up. But, um, yeah, the uh, the dirty deli. <laughs> <laughs> my deli wasn't very dirty. I called it my hamster cage, though, because, like, you couldn't leave. It was, like, this little box you had to work in and run in the oh. wheel, you know? Although my wheel was just slicing meat like <laughs> or frying chicken or whatever. But um, I don't know. I, as far as, like, my future, um, like, partner or whatever, I mean, I, I've written out pages of things that I, I would like to have in a partner, you know? Any um, highlights you can touch on? <laughs> I don't know if there's anything we could talk about, but um, I don't know. Just I think women have this like magical thing about them. I mean, you're very lucky to um, to be in love and be married with like uh, you get this little bit of ma magic that's with you all the time. You know, like um, I just want you know she doesn't have to be perfect, but she has to be perfect for me. Right. Um, that. Not every woman you see has that magic about them, you know? It, mm -hmm. it, it, but I don't know. I don't know. The one that, that fits us for you, it's like Tetris, you know? There's that perfect fit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny because, like, if I'm going to make things work in, in my bread truck, um, I need to find, like, a homeless girl. That's, like, the best fit. <laughs> I need to find yeah. a, a girl that's just wandering with no home or something like but you know in a way too somebody maybe has that bit of that background and then trying to find themselves you know it, that can be like a great thing there i think there's a lot of people spirit. out there that want to uh change their lives and and go and chase the dream as i was saying in my twitter and maybe uh, you know some girl out there needs that push in the shape of you coming and saying you know what i'm doing this and mm -hmm. it's like yep. i always dreamt about it I yeah, want to yeah. do it, you know. That could that could happen. I don't know. Who knows yeah. what could happen? So, um, yeah. I, I do know of a few relationships here and there that have started in both people doing the same thing. So they each had their own vehicle, mm -hmm. and uh, they haven't exactly worked out. You know, I don't know. Well, but, I think uh, if they've started it on their own. It's a very independent lifestyle. That's the thing. It is to come together. Yeah, and if you have two separate independent van lives going on, it's hard to bring those together. Yes. Are you guys going to drive in convoy all the time? Or are you going to sell right. one of your things? It's kind of tricky, but um, yeah. I have to go well, to the restaurant again. I have to go. <laughs> well, I think that was rushing the last yeah. time. <laughs> well, we're going to let you go. It's been an amazing night. Like, uh, we got to have you back again sometime in the fall once we're all back up again and let and kind of catch up with where you're at because I really want to follow your story. Sure, absolutely. And this is not out of, uh, I'm going to invite myself, but I want to, I may come meet you guys. So uh, if I make my way to Canada and stuff like that, we'll have to link up up in Canada. I love oh, it. Oh, definitely. <laughs> 100%. 100%. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I, I got a, I got a couple of uh, contacts in Canada, so um, actually back on my channel, there's a van life or duet or duo that play music are from Canada. Yeah. I think they're from Quebec. Um, oh right, yes, I, I yeah, I'll go back. Even Zini Jackson is their name, but um, yeah, I, I would love to come meet you guys. I think it'd be awesome. I, I want to check out Canada really badly. So we're looking forward. That would be amazing. Like we said, After you're October, especially. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> At the nicest time with red maple everywhere, yes. especially in Quebec. Uh, that's the perfect time to come. <laughs> it's been such a pleasure. You're you're really such an honest and open person. That's what I truly believe is the big uh, draw to your channel. And just keep that up. Never let anything change that. Just keep being yourself, and I think you're really going to take off myself. Awesome. Thank you so much, and thank you for what you guys do. The support that you give to other YouTubers and small creators and uh, that effect in the community is, is not unappreciated. I, it, it definitely really matters and it really makes a huge impact. So I,
thank you so much. I appreciate it. You guys make the show. You and the chat are the 80%. We just give a forum. You guys do all the great <laughs> Awesome. But thank you so much. You take care of yourself, okay? Absolutely. I will. I'll see you out on the road. Sounds <laughs> great. You be safe and keep in touch, okay? Absolutely. We'll be seeing each other soon. Cheers. Bye, Bye now. But goodbye. Have a good night. You too. Poor guy. He's so... Uh... He, he's a trooper, man. Yeah, I <laughs> no. know. Uh, we really uh, went <laughs> yeah. today. Uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, Marty was offering uh, contacts in Alberta down the rabbit hole. If you can still hear us uh, uh, down the rabbit hole in Alberta, is your other contact on the other side of Canada. <laughs> That's right. You got on both sides now. Yeah. So, so you have connections in both <laughs> places that can uh, come from one to another. And uh, WDF channel, what is a, what's a push mean? Pusha is uh, the town in Latvia where Xenia's mom grew up. Yeah. Uh, her mom passed away of cancer early in life. So we want to kind of do a tribute to her when we started our business. It's a town about maybe 40 kilometers from the Russian border. Yeah. Uh, I think Mr. Push is in love. He's been smiling all night. Yeah, I am, but. <laughs> <laughs> <Very sweet. laughs> oh, my God. Um, uh, thank you so much, Mechanic Steve. Yeah, um, it was so cool to meet you. Oh, yeah. We're here six times a week at 8 p.m. Eastern with guests every day except for Tuesday, where we have Tuesday Tech Talk live shout out screen time. Uh, for channels, we are going on a little bit of vacation schedule in July. Uh, we're not going to be on every day, but uh, we're going to be back to our normal programming after vacation. I hope you guys two. that sub too, please leave comments of any type just because after the show, I'll definitely go over and check out your channels as well. Yes, yeah. Uh, please. Yeah, so we yeah. see who... Uh, who who is who, and we can go and check your content as well. That would be amazing. Uh, Paul, uh, if you hook up with uh, Down the Rabbit Hole Travel, she, she was saying that she's in Alberta. So you see, now you already got two people, uh, another two people in Canada. So Yeah, and a tribe called Cookies. Uh, if you have a Twitter, uh, message us, and we can schedule something for yes. after our time after vacation because, uh, as we said, we're going off uh, starting July. But mm. definitely... Uh, you know, uh, text us up on Twitter if you can, and we'll schedule something up. It's so good to have all you guys here tonight. It's nice always to see new faces. I hope you get to meet everybody in the chat as well. Um, this is how we grow, you know. We're not a sub for sub. It's just an amazing byproduct of doing this. We're always looking for, uh, uh, see, in the woods, uh, uh, in the woods with Wolfie. Great show, Paul. Thanks for coming on the show. Exactly, you know. We, we don't really... have MySpace, but uh, I know, you can, I you I can put on a, a book, pushstudios at gmail.com. See, right there, I got to go to his channel. I got to make sure I saw because I definitely want to go back where I like I like this. Yeah, Yeah. our our social media and email is in this description in the about section. If you go over and may, maybe some of that you have, if not, just email us and we'll figure something out. Fart Tales falls asleep. <sighs> Best friend in your thread seems to me told me about your channel. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Polynesian, hi, Polly. Polynesian, so how to are you? See you. We've Missed been you talking as well. about you. Yes. Yesterday in our show, uh, we uh, shouted out your channel uh, for the amazing work that you did with videos about us to get attention of of people on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, couldn't say much more thank you. Uh, can't even express it in words. But uh, yeah, yesterday's stream at the beginning of it, we were uh, shouting you out and showing your channel as well. We hope that it helps you get some more uh, supporters too for all the great work that you're doing. Um, MySpace, yeah, apparently it's still around. Somebody was telling me that uh, just, um, Justin Timberlake bought it or something. Yeah, he bought it back in like 2000, just before it tanked. Well, it didn't tank, it's still around, but yeah, he thought it was going to be the next big thing, which it was at the time. But it just Well, it could have been if it would have gone the right, yeah. you know, path, ah, really. Um, Dylan's from Indiana, Lazy C is from Texas. We live in a 48 foot Probus luxury bus. Wow. Oh, that's cool. Storage unit business. 
cool. Really cool. This, that's the gift of all this. There's just so many freaking interesting people on here. So much stuff going on. Hey. Oh. Hey, Sal? What? I, I think I don't understand the What is I, ICQ and ASL? Uh, hey, Pusha ASL. <laughs> That's age, sex, uh, age, sex, is it language now? I'm too young for this. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no problem, Polynesian. And once again, thank you for everything you did for us. I absolutely can never thank you enough. Really do appreciate it. Really do appreciate it. Yeah, location. That's what the other one. I knew down the rabbit hole would know that one. I'm just kidding. I'm just bugging you. What's what happened, Philip? Yeah, we gotta get Philip on soon. Philip, did you get your internet uh, stuff set out, settled? That you got a good connection now. So what are you saying? We need to get back to MySpace. <laughs> Maybe we do. I think it's like an off-grid space now. Uh, like for people who don't like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, it's uh, coming back as an off-grid thing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, was asking, who was asking about what is ICQ? I was asking because oh. uh, cookie.com uh, is... Uh, Encrypted messages there that uh, I don't get because, as I said, I'm too young for this. I don't understand it. Here, oh, did you give me his number? I didn't give it. ICQ? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know. ICQ? Okay, add me up. Here is mine. Um, but he didn't put it, though. No. And mm. they, he also has AIM. A I M. Yeah, A A I M. Yeah, you didn't give your ICQ, whatever it is. Um, I'm so off. Pusha, when is uh, Braxis Paranormal supposed to be on? Uh, yeah. after our vacation. Yeah. I can't give you the date right now. I'm I'm I have a guest list uh, of people who is coming up uh, after vacation. Uh, that we are scheduling right now because it's kind of farther out. I have uh, like 15, 15 people lined up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19 people that I have to schedule in and then uh, uh, 10 more uh, on the waiting list. So great season two coming up <laughs> for the yeah. first uh, months at least. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Happy meal. Hello. Oh, okay. So you sent an email to us. Okay, perfect. I'll check it out. Years 47 going 100. ICQ has Windows 10 app. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my God. And Philip answered no. You have a great night, Wolfie. Thank you so much for coming. And yeah, Paul is amazing. Yeah, definitely keep in touch with the guy. He's a lot of fun. A really great channel. Delbert doesn't like his smoking. Oh, <laughs> I can't please everybody. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Amanda, sorry about that. Uh, anyway, we had a really good talk, a really good chat. I mean, I. Like I said, I think the first time I met Paul, I'm pretty sure he was editing a video as a live stream. And then I seen some of or I seen one or two of his videos and then caught the live stream. Yeah. He's got such a great lifestyle thing going on. I really could see his channel. I could see his channel being picked up and turned into like kind of a travel a channel series. Yeah. You know, it's got all the right makings for it. It's really open. But, I'm curious to see where he's going to go, not just in his travels and that, but where his channel is going to probably take off to. I think Amanda is his ex-girlfriend, Delbert says. 
Oh, that is my act. There's okay. There you go. Well, welcome. It's good to have you here. Heard good things about you. No, I don't have it in spam or in the inbox, by the way. So if you were serious about sending email to us, I don't have it. Uh, Ten minutes. Paul was pinning about how much he loves you. What a shit disturber. I think he's replacing uh, bottle caps. Uh, yeah, he's and, and, bottle and caps. Twice, and just twice as value there. <laughs> yeah. Although nobody can replace bottle caps, but this is in a different spin there. Um, All burger hates you, Happy Meal. It doesn't put me in the mind of a guy who hates too much. Well, I'm sure he doesn't. I'm sure he knows already, but yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're just waiting yeah. for the email from Cookie. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, they uh, said they're gonna uh, send an email to yeah paul he's in bottle caps yeah he's 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 one of a kind he... <clears throat> it definitely keeps things interesting yes that's right down the rabbit hole i was just going to say that dilbert uh is our backup bottle caps <laughs> yeah if those two meet up it'd be interesting real interesting for sure Yes, for sure, Jeanette, but it was so great having you here. Thank you so much for coming. And we're about to shut down anyway, so um, we'll be back tomorrow night, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, as we always are. Thank you guys so much for joining tonight. Hope you guys had a really great night. Hope you had a good time. And uh, We're yeah. going to be here tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern. Yeah. Um, uh, so come and join us, and uh, we're going to have fun together again. <laughs> yes, Terrell, everybody loves bottle caps. Always like to Oh, we just got to, there's a little bit of a, we learned not to do it the night before because nobody gets paid to do this, and uh, sometimes then the next day they make a change. So uh, we'll definitely let you know in the morning. We put out a promo video every day that will say who's going to be on for that night. And, uh, yeah, so I hope you... Stay connected and check out some more of our guests. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you once again to everybody that helped us when we almost lost our channel. We owe you the world. We'll always thank you for that. You guys have an amazing night. Be well. Don't worry about a teeth frog. Real life Just comes glad first. you're safe. The yes. storm is storm. <laughs> That's right. There'll be other live streams. You can always go back and watch it. Paul was fantastic. So have a great night, guys. Cheers and keep creating. Bye. Bye now.